Hello, and welcome to Tales from the Backlog. I see Mr. Kenny in the chat. Kenny, can you hear me okay? I'm going to keep talking until you answer. Ah, well, he said hello. I'm assuming he'd tell me if he saw my lips moving and couldn't hear me. Um, yeah, so I'm Steve Boshear. I'm not going to be your DM for the evening. We have a, a special guest for that. Um, as you know, if you watch the stream, <laughs> yeah, as you know, if you watch the stream, uh, this is usually on Monday. This is our game where we have a rotating cast of games and a rotating cast of players so that we can try out all kinds of new systems. Uh, tonight, we're streaming on Thursday uh, because we have a special guest star, DM Scotty of the DM's Craft, who is here to present to us his brand new game, uh, slash hack boom. Um, yeah, uh, so before I turn it over to you, Scotty, I just want to say to those who may not be aware of Scotty, they call him the craft father. Uh, <laughs> he is the he is the godfather of the tabletop crafting scene, uh, especially on uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, and for me personally, uh, it's very cool to have him on here because my uh, my love of, of Scotty's channel goes back almost as far as my D&D &D career. Uh, my first D&D &D game, I was the DM for it, and it was fourth edition at the time. My The final encounter of our first adventure featured my first crafted piece of scenery uh, that I made by following Scotty's advice on his channel. Uh, and I actually, it was someone else in our group who found your channel, Scotty. And so he was showing me what he was going to do when he DM'd and I stole it from him and he was mad at me. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so, so my whole, my whole gaming career has been against the backdrop of, of tabletop crafting, largely thanks to Scotty. So thank you for joining us tonight and, uh, take it away. Tell us about the game. Uh, yes, I, I have a nice game for you tonight. Um, I've been working on this game for several years. Uh, it kind of came from my wish to have a game that was enough rules to, you know, have the arbitration you needed, but the rules that kind of get out of the way of the story. They, they let the story flow without having to constantly look up rules or check your sheets and that kind of thing. So that was the impetus for the system. And I think it's very successful. I've run it at a lot of conventions, and the games get crazy. And I <laughs> often get yelled at because <laughs> my group gets too excited. So other people in the room are like, hey, can you guys cool it? You know, <laughs> you're getting too excited over there. So, uh, And that's great. I mean, that's fantastic. That's the whole point of doing this is to have fun, so everybody to have fun. So, um, you know, in that respect, they work. So I hope – uh, you enjoy the, the game, and I'm going to kind of tell the rules as we go, because uh, we have a couple people played, and then uh, two people haven't. So I'm going to tell you the rules as we go, and they're so quick that it really won't interfere with the game much. It'll just be, you know, a, a few sentences, and then we can move on from there. So, uh, yeah. So let's, uh, let's proceed with this game, all right? Sounds good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have each person uh, tell us about their character. All right. So um, why don't we start with uh, Vanna Highbury? Uh, yes, I am Mia. I will be playing Vanna Highbury. I may not be the tallest, smallest, or fairest of the halfling folk, but by, but by my father's furry feet, I can put an arrow in the eye of an orc from 111 paces. As a warden of the woods... I recommend that you respect the flora and the fauna within. And that is who I am. Dana Highbury. Nice. So for um so for the system, uh the 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 players will choose a a hero path. And so Mia has chosen chosen war at, uh, a warden. And so what, uh, and then you can choose inclinations, which further build on that. So what, what inclinations did you choose for the game? Uh, as a warden, uh, I have, um, as a halfling, I am slippery, which makes it, uh, uh, easy to escape from bad situations. And I'm also a trap finder. So 
Awesome, awesome. Uh, so is that uh, is that Ifidel? Did it I pronounce is. that correctly? It is, yes. Okay. Uh, I am Sarah, and I will be playing Ifidel of the Star Sea Reaches, the noble elf warrior. And may I say, it is an absolute pleasure for all of you to have me join your party today. Uh, you have doubtless heard of me, my many exploits, my um, quite famously uh, two-handed swords, uh, well, two two hands, two swords. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to uh, uh, leave you all in uh, exciting adventures this evening, as doubtless I will be leaving. Uh, just curious, what inclinations mm -hmm. did you pick? I have taken sweep slash swift attack, which means I get to attack all enemies near me on my turn. And I took born blessed, so I start with six karma instead of three. Awesome, awesome. And you'll find out how valuable those are very soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, let's move to Digit. Hi, I'm Lisa. And um, I will be playing Digit. And Digit is very happy to meet all of you. I am a curator of religious artifacts. Oh, uh, my apologies. This is Phil. Phil is my twin brother. He doesn't say much, but he points things out very well. I am a halfling and... I am a ecclesiastic, which means that I can heal and I can attack using the power of light. Blessings to all. Also, I am slippery. And I have been born blessed, which means I have six karma instead of three. I look forward, and we look forward, sorry, Phil, we look forward to our adventures together. Very cool, nice. very cool. And uh, the last but not least, we have Alfred the Grand. Yes. I am the greatest wizard that you have ever met. I received my title, the Grand, at a very young age while I was still in school. My classmates were so happy to bestow it upon me that they would laugh every time they say it. No doubt overcome with giddiness at their excitement of my presence and my brilliance. I am playing a conjurer. Uh, the inclinations that I chose were uh, thaumaturgy which uh, allows me to do sort of small illusion magic and like um, telekinesis type things. Um, and, and Fate Touched, which allows me to get a do-over on a turn once per session. All right, very cool. So um, you all start out with three karma, okay? And karma is what you kind of use as your luck. What you can use karma for is for one point of karma, you can change your die roll from one pip to another. So if you're if you're a five and you need a six, you can spend a karma, it'll become a six, right? Or if you're a three and you want to go to a six, you spend three karma, but you lose the karma. Okay. So that's how karma works. So some of a couple of you got the, the bonus karma. So you start with six, uh, and the, the rest of you start with three. You also have a hero die, a one hero die, which can be used any time to re-roll a die. So if karma won't get you there, you still have a chance with the hero die. And you can buy the hero die back with five karma. If you spend five karma, it's a lot, but you can get your hero die back if that's what you want to do. Now, um, the hero die is important for conjurers because you cannot use karma on spell rolls. OK, the winds of magic are too fickle and cannot be controlled. So you cannot use that's the only thing in the game you can't use karma on our spell rolls. OK, but you can use the hero die. All right. So, OK, now that we have that, those preliminaries out of the way, uh, let's get on with the story. So 
uh, you've teamed up and um, you were looking for a shortcut and this old bastard told you that there's a shortcut through the woods, through the dark wood, the deep dark wood. And well, it may be a shortcut, but there's also some other problems because there is, it is claimed by these Gortha, which are these large shaggy humanoids uh, and they're relentless in their um, scourging of the wood of other folk. So you've been in the woods several days trying to get through the wood, um, barely getting any sleep because the things either harass you at night, throwing, throwing spears into camp, um, watching you day and night. Um, while you try to rest, they take uh, their instruments, which are like serrated wood, and they scrape it back and forth so it makes this strange noise. So it makes a strange noise, and it's just you haven't been able. You're you're all exhausted. Um, minor skirmishes you've had with them, um, but they they seem to be just waiting for you to just be so weak and exhausted that they can just easily overwhelm you, and that seems to be their strategy. So, um, you're you're about at the end of your. You're about about at the end of your um, your stamina, and as you make pick your way through the wood, uh, you you're sure this is it. They're starting to close in. Um, you can see their eyes uh, glowing in the darkness. You see their their spears moving in. They're surrounding you on all sides. This is it. This is going to be um, the, your last stand. But then something happens. The woods kind of opens up in front of you as you stumble along, and there's a large clearing in the wood, and in front of you is this enormous gothic building. And as you look a little closer at the building, you see that the front, the sturdy front uh, wooden and iron shod doors are slightly ajar they're not closed uh, this might be the place you make your stand beware my friends if the door is open something may have entered it's a little trick I learned in wizard school yes something may have entered and that something is going to be us and I'll go ahead and uh, kick it open just for fun Okay, cool. Swords so, out, ready for whatever is going to be there. Okay, awesome, awesome. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all a strike right now oh. because you're exhausted. So that kind of uh, shows how exhausted you are. Now, remember, in this game, you only have three strikes. Three strikes, you're out. So you've already lost one of your strikes. You've only, you can only take two more strikes until you're dead. Okay. <laughs> I thought for a second you were going to say that it was because if he kicked the door open that something <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. So, so if he kicks the door it's open <laughs> Are you being cautious as you enter or are you being boisterous and I'm here and ready to take you on? Uh, second one. Absolutely. Okay. That's well, whatever's here. Get ready to defend yourselves, because this is my castle now. I'm going to... Okay, Ithidil, so stealth, please. I'm going to uh, lean to uh, <laughs> to Vanna and say... Is it Vanna or Vena? Vena. Okay, I'm going to lean into Vena and say, Have you noticed she seems a bit full of herself? I had not noticed, Alfred. You have been standing before her this whole time. Are you not also full of yourself? Who is not, I suppose? (laughs) 
This is completely you... unrelated to the game, but I just want to let you know that the cat has come and literally sat herself down on top of my chair. Just an unerring aim. Come on. Okay, carry so, on. Digit, were you trying to speak? We didn't hear you. Are you uh, muted there, Lisa? Bill can't hear you, Lisa. Digit. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was saying, oh, blessings. No, this could be a welcome. The door may be open for us, and we should use our manners. And <laughs> yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, Digit, you notice that this seems like um, a monastery or a cathedral, and it's weird that something like this grand would just be in the middle of the woods. Oh, well, yes, indeed, it is welcome because this is clearly a place of holy worship. It's a monastery or a cathedral. We should enter with all. Respect. Come on, whoever's in here. <laughs> <laughs> Be a friend of all. Show yourself. Why did a scamper in behind? This cathedral allowed it to be here in order to save me and my friends. <laughs> Show yourself, or my friends will continue having religious debates. <laughs> I can make nothing, and I step into the cathedral. Okay, cool. So, uh, <laughs> uh, seems like you're all going in. So, Vena, oh. as you you kind of glance up and you notice something above the door, um, it's uh, kind of covered with uh, foliage and filled in a bit, but you you can read the writing and it says "Order of the Spheres" over the doorway. Oh, Order of the Spheres. Barely perceptible through the moss that clings to the stone. I don't think I've heard of that. I will have to ask Alfric. Alfric, Order of the Spears, have you heard of it? Have I heard Did of it? it? Uh, no. All right. Is it possible that Digit may have because he is, um, has, I guess, a boon on, on religious knowledge? Right, right, right. Um, you you haven't really heard of this in particular, but you know the spheres refer to the spheres of existence. Like there's the the the, the, the plane of the deities. There's the mortal plane. There's there's other planes that are kind of that are kind of making up the universe. And so that's when you hear the, them say the spheres, that's what it means to you. It's religious in nature. Yeah. But also, it's kind of um, philosophical in nature, also. That was odd. So, interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, as you guys barge in, um, the doors kind of swing open, some leaves blow in, um, and it's kind of a dark uh, entryway in front of you. Uh, no torches or anything are lit in the hall. Um, I would like to use my magic. My circle of magic is Shadow Weaver. Um, mm -hmm. And rather than reach for one of my five torches, I would like to use my magic to try and push the shadows away, leaving light behind them. Oh, that's that's very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Um, you feel uh, your vision also pierces shadows. You can see in darkness with your with your expertise. Um, you feel that it's not the darkness isn't like a living darkness. It's just it's, it's just the fact that there's an absence of light. Okay. Um, the windows, the windows you notice now are kind of are shuttered. And so there's not a lot of light coming in. And you also noticed as you came in, what would make it a good dispense, defensible spot was the, the windows also have bars over them. So it'd be hard for the enemies to get in, to break in. Um, um, was it nighttime outside? No, it wasn't. 
Okay. It was about midday. So in a number of ways, I'm I'm just wasting my time trying to magically push shadows away. <laughs> yeah, that window. that won't do. That won't really do anything. Um, as far as pushing them, because there's no light. There's no light to come in. There's right. no. There's no. The shadows aren't kind of mystical or, you know, evil or magical or anything that would like restrain the light. So it's just there's that, there's no light here. So I'm that's gonna, all it is. I'm gonna. Be but like, like I said, you can happy. see in it. You can see through it. The others can't. I'm going to turn to my friends and uh, just try and salvage my complete useless spell cast. <laughs> and I'm going to turn to them and say, uh, My friends, I'm afraid the shadows here cannot be driven back by mortal magic. We must risk a flame. Or perhaps so sunlight. So, Digit, did you have a comment? No, this is Phil. <laughs> ah. Oh. <laughs> He's playing too. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. What does Phil have to say? Oh, Phil's just pointing things out. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> so, this is kind of a, a large. Uh, as you look around, um, uh, Alfric, um, it's just kind of a large foyer, and it also seems like a guard where there were, where the guards would be, but there aren't any guards. Uh, you also notice that there are a lot of animal skeletons on the ground, like small little animals that have come in since the door has been opened. So that would seem to indicate that either it's been deserted, or you know, a long time, or something is doing something with animals, eating them or killing them. Digit. I... Yes. Is it not true that many religious orders seek to care for those who are not of sound mind? Indeed it is. I noticed the... Still... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I noticed the bars on the windows. Is it possible that this monastery or chapel was, in fact, used to care for those who might harm others or themselves were they released? Hmm. You don't feel that's true because of the name of the monastery? Like that, uh, that voice just said. I don't think that's true. <laughs> Was that your brother? Divinely inspired. Yeah. Yeah. Help me, help me barricade yeah. the door. Yeah. <laughs> Phil, Phil just pointed out to me that it is probably, it would probably be wise to close the door to keep whatever is following us from following us in. Yes, I, yes. Iffy, help me, help me with the door. I could not agree more with you. Uh, or Phil. Okay, Phil. so you so you guys are gonna are gonna uh, close the door. There's also a bar that you could apply to the door so to keep it secure. Excellent. Go ahead and do that. Uh, easy to for us to remove if we need to escape in a hurry, um, but hard for them to get through from the outside. But totally. Almost. Yeah. This this thing this place is like a fortress. They're gonna have a hard time getting in here. Um, now you do. The two of you do notice something strange as you close the door. Mm -hmm. um, the creatures, the Gortha, are not coming into the clearing of the monastery. They're just staying at the edge of the woods. Like they didn't follow you in. Like they were literally about to attack. They were on your heels, about to attack. And when you stormed into the the monastery, they didn't follow you into the clearing or try to get into the monastery. Either you're kind of hanging back. Well, that's not good. It's disconcerting oh. as I peer around the door. It's like, look behind me into the chapel or the monastery. I'm like, what? We may not be safe in here, apparently. Or oh. perhaps they're heathens and are not and are wary of religion of religion, oh. and so don't seek the light. I, I would like to pull out my magnifying lens 
and see if I can examine the bodies of these animals to figure out what manner of death they died. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and like I said, since you can see in the dark, it's no, it's no problem for you. Does anybody want to do some kind of light source so the rest of you can see? Bill has just pointed out that I have a flint and steel and a lantern. Okay, there you go. There you go. You'd like to light the lantern? If that's all right with everyone else. <clears throat> you said the, the barred windows are shuttered. Maybe kick one of the shutters open to let some sunlight in. Mm, you could do that, yeah. Actually, yes, because we could do yeah, that around the that. bars. Yes. Because I still, that, that isn't the only thing keeping the, the Gotha out. So, By all means. I'll, I'll join you, Vena. If you, you kick one, I'll kick another. So... I'm like I'm reaching up to pound it open from my short uh, stature. <laughs> I just come by over your head and just punch it. Like, Thank you. Keep going. And I just look up over my shoulder at you. Okay. Thanks, Ippy. The blinding light hurts my eyes while I'm trying to examine things in the dark. So, Alfred, you're kind of examining these uh, animal skeletons, right? Yeah. Okay. Looking for claw um, marks, tooth marks, anything that might tell me what happened. Right. They look like they didn't die naturally. The skeletons are pretty mutilated. Yeah. It does and it. whatever, 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 you know, meat was on them was sucked off, and whatever cartilage was left just held the skeleton together. You know, it's just kind of this dried husk. What was left of the, of of the of the meat of the of whatever animal. So there's not, not enough much. meat to tell if they died from stabbing or slashing type wounds. Um, I can guess the bones are probably broken in some places. Does that yeah, tell me anything yeah. about whether they might have been uh, killed through blunt force? Or do the broken bones speak more of damage during the eating? Oh, right, right. It looks like they were killed by some, you know, massive blunt force. Ah, well, that is information. We are perhaps looking for something that is strong and maybe doesn't have claws or doesn't use them as its primary killing method. Hmm. Uh, Rabble Rouser, how many entrances and exits from this room other than the main doors? Ah, yeah, uh, good question. Good question. Had a moment to, to sell yeah, there's ourselves. there's a room to the right, which um, you think is is a guard room. Um, then there's a room to the left, which may have been where they would receive guests and you know uh, put their you know stash their belongings or that kind of thing. And then the hall goes off into the darkness, and just down the hall a bit is. Um, it looks like a stairway that goes up. Uh, when you came in, there was a bell tower. Hmm. It was the tallest point in the monastery. And the doors, these, the guard room and the receiving room, uh, are the doors open to these they rooms? They are, yes. I assume They're can... slightly ajar. Okay. I will... Look in the guard room first, just looking around, not doing a, an intensive search, but just, you know, looking in the corners for for enemies and obvious trinkets and loot left lying about. Right, right. Um, so you can see better in the dark, but you can't see totally in the dark. Yes. Um, so is is Digit going to gonna help out with the lantern? Um... Digits, uh, would you mind giving me a hand here? Yeah. Oh, Lisa, you're muted again. Sorry. All good. <laughs> so, yes, of course, I'll be. I'm happy to help. Okay. As the light shines in the room, uh, you see there are there's a, a weapon rack with cobwebs on it. Nice weapons though, uh, halberds and crossbows, swords. But at the far end of the room, there's a jumble of something, 
and the light as the light glints off of it you realize that it's the hard edges of armor that's in a pile just stacked in a pile at the far end of the room i will take a closer look is it stacked in a pile as if say the occupants of the armor were sucked out uh <laughs> while still wearing it right or... right uh well as you approach and you get a better look at it you see that the armor seems fused together in a clump and you can see the desiccated skeletons of the guards just all jumbled up in the armor Oh, that's definitely not good. <laughs> yes. I have something much more interesting for you, dear, to take a look at. Hmm. Digit and looks... some rat skeletons. Uh, uh, Digit looks up. <laughs> um, <laughs> a quick question for you guys. Um, are you guys hearing the music? The chat says no. No. Now I am no. I, just just momentarily I did. Okay. Yeah, very faint for a moment. It might have been too low. Crank it up a little bit. I'm the. I'll never be able to hear it because it's not coming to my headphones. So. All right. Sorry about that. All right, they're here now. Let me know if it's too loud and I need to turn it down. Voice. We will. Down. We will. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. So you have called me in to look at the pile of armor. Mm -hmm. I'm not um, interested in such mundane trinkets. <laughs> These are for people well, not intelligent enough to... Oh, and do, do you think that they... Was it a failure of intelligence that led all of the armor to be kind of fused together in a big armor ball? I don't know how armor works. It's probably just hot. It is, but usually not like this. Um... So, Alfred, you feel you feel a residual energy in here. Um, it's not really what you're familiar with, as far as normal magic. Okay. So it's not. But something... there is some kind of there was some kind of release of energy in here. And as you kind of take the time to notice this, because it's really strong in this room, you, you notice further that this uh, energy that's left, the residual energy is like a fog. It's like a fog that you can feel that where there's parts, parts that it's, it's less apparent and there's parts where it's more apparent. Like as you kind of walk around a little bit in the chamber, um, here it might seem, you know, it's like it's like it's like a draft or a, or a warm spot or something like that. You might you might feel a little more in one spot and less in another, but it's definitely some. It's definitely permeate, permeating this place, and you can't you can't really identify it. It's 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 an unusual energy, but your senses, your mage senses, are telling you that this is there's something here. There's something very powerful that's either here or associated with this place. All right. Can I... Well, while you do that, I'm going to... Oh, just as a note, I'm going to wander on over to the weapons rack and start going through it, like, looking for the best one. Okay, okay I cool, cool. I'm going to do the wizard version of the same thing and look around for any books or scrolls or any writing about anything at all in this room. Okay. Um, so, Baina, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to go over to the bones that Alfred was examining earlier to get a more professional eye on said animal remains. Um, uh -huh. And realize that, yes, that they've been smashed a bit rather than bitten and chewed on. Um, like, oh, oh, okay. And then I'm going to start searching through the room. Uh, for any um, other clues as to what might be in there, footprints in the dust or that sort of thing. 
Uh, you think that the, the skeletons could have been masticated by something? So chewed on, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the flesh sucked off. Oh, lovely. Yeah, and then spat out. Yeah. Oh, really? well, uh, <laughs> the... <laughs> it doesn't remind me of anything I am familiar with. Uh, You're thinking maybe... that what they thought was the residual skin or whatever on the thing is actually some remnant of the saliva of whatever did this. It just kind of mm. hardened like a resin. Wow, this is unlike anything I've seen before. And Very as you're as you're looking at it, you're kind of crouching down looking at it. Uh, you're, you're a halfling, so you have to crouch that far. Um, <laughs> uh, you hear footsteps coming towards you and you look up and you see a robed white bearded gentleman kind of stroking his beard and walking towards you and he's mumbling something he's mumble. he's talking to himself he's mumbling something can't quite make it out by the gnarly nails of my grandfather's feet halt who are you? And as he, as he walk, he just continues to walk towards you, and he walks right through you. Yeah. Uh, guys, help! Spooky, care, uh, help! So you're the only one that's seen this. Yeah. Oh. I will sprint back. With my my brand new halberd, my best friend in my hand, <laughs> and I'm like, what is it? What's happening? Do you see that? Turn and point at it. And there's nothing there. Oh gosh, where'd it go? No, I don't see it. What was it? There, there was something here a moment ago. A, a man in a robe. It was mumbling something. Kenny in the chat says we should all split up to cover more ground. Oh, totally. Guys. <laughs> 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 so, uh, Alfred, uh, back to you for a second. Um, you said you were looking for books. You do find something. It's kind of a log, and it looks like the guard captain was, you know, logging people in. And you start to recognize these names there that are in the register. Um, they're philosophers and great thinkers. And being an educated person, um, you have heard of some of these. So all these people came to this place, these educated uh, people. Ah, uh, yes. Not necessarily mages. Some were. Does this, are these names all contemporaries? Oh, I'm right, right. A list of names of people from different centuries. Yeah. Oh, I, that's a great question. They were all contemporary like 20 years ago. Okay. Mm. Interesting. They know which direction did this uh, apparition come from? Muted. I think you're muted, yeah. My apologies. Uh, yes, it came from the hall, down from those stairs, and mm -hmm. passed right through me as I stood here. Interesting. That's why I muted. I apologize. <laughs> That's <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't be a tales from the backlog stream without angry cats yeah it's truly yeah <laughs> so um, yes that way yeah so further in now um oh yeah okay go ahead i was gonna say here's the question um, this area seems to be fairly safe, and there is a guard room um, 
which you did find the lock or you did find the key for the lock you could kind of rest and get your strength back or you could press on indeed well I must say friends <laughs> I am not inclined to go picking fights uh, at the current moment uh when we are uh, forced guests in somebody else's house where something is smushing skeletons and uh, drinking armored warriors out of their armor, uh, I, for one, think it might be best to bed down, set watches, and get some much-needed rest. We still need to figure out, this is a respite, but this certainly isn't a solution long-term to our problem, which is how do we get out of this forest? Now, there is um, there is the creepy remnant of the guards all fused together in the guard room, but there is the other room that you haven't explored yet, which is in the foyer, that kind of the um, receiving room. Indeed. Does anybody want to come with me and take a look into the other room? See if that might be perhaps more suitable. Ah, thank you, Phil. Phil, Phil will go with you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not inclined to stand here. Another ghost may appear. <laughs> yes. I'd like to stop Phil. and just stare at Digit for a while and say, doesn't Phil ever get tired? <laughs> <laughs> He, he does, of course, of course, of course he does. It just seems like he's been standing perfectly still for days. Oh, he, he's just a attentive guy. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Well, come along, Phil. You can use your energy. I uh, and I will go to the <laughs> other room and open the door. Uh, okay. To the I want to room. go too. Yes, yes, come come with him, Digit. Does everyone want to go? Then you can come too. I shall accompany yes, I you think... to make sure nothing harms you. Yes, I think I would like to stick close to um, everybody now. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, Vena, if you've been, um, do, you, do you feel, how do I put this, cursed? Do you feel the urge to murder us all? Or perhaps you turn into some sort of monster? No, I do not. All right, I'm sure nothing bad will happen at all. Then let's go. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, I'll I want to give you a karma chip for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank and you. Now that Iffy has suggested <laughs> like, that, uh, I walking towards the back of the group, am going to try and get some sort of mystic read on, on Vena to see if I detect any corruption or or ensorcelment upon her oh right right um you're not feeling that you're not feeling anything like that um but this place um it's like it's like a thought in your mind that's trying to work forward like something something's not right here and your mind is trying to work through it it hasn't quite come to the surface yet what is there, there's something wrong here but it's just not it's just not manifesting in your mind yet you you know when you if you keep thinking about it you'll fu you'll figure it out but it just hasn't come to you yet what is that phil yes i i feel it too something is wrong yes and yeah you all feel it um alfred feels it literally more literally because of his affinity for magic but the rest of you feel, you know, that that tingling on your spine, the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. Something's, yes, yeah, just something's. This, their intuition is telling you something's not right here, and you just can't put your finger on it. I... <laughs> Phil, did you want to say something? Maybe Phil could. <laughs> <laughs> Phil thinks we should look around a little more that there's something not right here. 
So, um, yeah, you did. You did look at the reception room. Um, it's yeah. just um, there's it's cobwebs and dusty, but there's like nice wooden benches, um, cloaks and robes hanging from the walls. Um, nothing that seems dangerous in here. What condition are the the, the fabric in? Uh, it's pretty pretty old, um, and you know it's not in great shape because it seems like it's been exposed to the elements somewhat. Gotcha. Is it about With the door the open and everything? Twenty years. Yep, that sounds about right. Yeah. Actually, quick question to Steve. Have you been sharing the information you found with us? I don't know how, if Alfred plays his cards close to the chest or if he's been... Yeah, that's a good question. If he's delighted to expound upon everything. <laughs> how much he knows more than... Yes. Well, I, I definitely told you that uh, many of the great minds of uh, our generation, uh, including, you know, the great philosopher Phocrates and, and, and Dato... Uh, they all came here and signed this guest book, or someone using their names as code names did so. Um, so I, I told you that I probably have not said anything about the the magical aura because I would not bring up something that I couldn't identify. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a pretty good idea of the twenty years. Uh, Scotty. Yeah. Is there, in religious institutions, sometimes there are like murals on the walls or um, scriptures or paintings. Is there anything like that on the walls here? Um, there are like um, uh, very dusty, uh, but when you kind of scrape the dust away, you can see that uh, it's kind of relief work that's detailing the spheres. Like the, okay. the the sphere of the divine, the sphere of the mortal, you know, um, the the elemental spheres and that kind of thing. Um, so the cosmos, yeah, the intellectual um, uh, creation of the cosmos. Okay. Like how the how the greatest minds think the cosmos is laid out. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, uh, Steve, I have a, uh, I have a question for you. Um, are you mute right now? No. Okay. It seemed like when you talk, we could hear the music, and when you don't, we don't hear the music. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely when you say something, the music comes back on. <laughs> and when you're not, it's not. We don't hear it. I just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that won't work. <laughs> I think we'll probably just have to have to skip the music. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, so do you guys want to press on or rest in this room or the I, guard room? Personally, I hope for resting in this room. It is skeleton free, and uh, it does it have a does it have another lock and key? Mm hmm. Well, yeah, you found you found um, you found the keys in the guard room. So mm -hmm. this this room does have a lock. I am quite fatigued from our uh, foyer in the forest. It'd be nice to take a rest. Yes, I agree. Phil said uh, he's happy to take first watch. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Digit, will you be joining him? Oh, no, I'll sleep. Naturally. Of course, we don't want anyone to have to take a single watch on their own. Um, I will join Phil. Thank you, Alfred. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, Shaking in, my head. Go lie down. <laughs> in Easy D6, how I do it is... Uh, how we do it is, uh, if you take a... If you take a long rest, which is like you, you sleep and you eat a meal or eat something, then you recover one strike. So uh, nothing happens uh, over your rest. So you all get your your your, th your three strikes back. Great. Yeah. 
And for the record, I don't know if now is an appropriate time to use it. I do have in my equipment, I did get the preserved rations I can share out amongst the group. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that have, would be nice. Yeah. I have some of those as well. Okay, okay cool. Cool. Oh, lovely. So yeah, we you can share those and that that helps recover everybody. I'm not All right. So you, you do the shifts, the guard shifts, and um nothing seems to uh, happen. Um, every now and then someone on guard will hear kind of a whispering voice on the other side of the door. Does that person want to open the door and see what it is or just leave the door shut? Alfred, you're up first. What do you do? <laughs> I'd like to approach the door and like lean. I'm, I'm going to try to avoid actually touching it but i'm going to lean and get my ear as close to the door as i can and see if i can hear anything awesome awesome okay so you hear a mumbling which as you kind of concentrate um becomes more clear and it seems to be like philosophical questions like asking themselves philosophical questions is this is this the right thing to do are we are, are we playing are, are we playing god are we you know should we be even doing this i'm opening the door <laughs> like oh no what Alfred's weakness as you do the, you just see kind of a whiff uh just kind of a mist and a whiff, and it smells like a whiff of ozone and just nobody there you whiffed <laughs> I do have a question. Is Digit is Phil really awake and Digit is not? How does exactly did that work? <laughs> well, there was a moment, uh, <laughs> Ifidel, where um, you elves are are very light sleepers. Um, so, but you feel something on your shoulder. And you look over real quick, it kind of wakes you up, and it's Phil laying over your shoulder. Sorry. <laughs> like his two little hands, like this. Just a little finger over your shoulder. And then, and, and Digit is over there, you know, <laughs> snoring away, lightly snoring away. I, for a second, <laughs> I'm about to poke Phil and tell him he's supposed to be on watch. And then I'm like, no, that's crazy. And then I, like, Alfred. Well, hold on a Does second. I wanted, I wanted to say something to the mist yes. outside the door as it dissipates. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I heard sorry. them talking about, um, you know, should we do this? Are we playing God? And I'm going to yank open the door. And as I see them, like, whatever it was, start to dissipate, I'm just going to say, the pursuit of knowledge is its own reward and always worthy, and then slam the door. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, Alfred, why are you slamming the door? None of your know, words, trying to jock. Trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Digit okay. sits up and is asking... What's going on? But Phil is still on Iffy's shoulder. Sure. You're, you're going to wake up Phil. <laughs> Phil's supposed to be on watch, Digit. Oh my gosh, Phil. I had to rush into danger myself because he fell asleep. Oh, Phil, for shame. <laughs> I wake back up. What danger? Alfred, why were you out the door? What did you see? There were just some people questioning their enrollment at the university. Don't worry about it. Well, that does sound like something you would do if you enrolled into the university, so fine. I roll over and go back to sleep. <laughs> okay, so unless anybody wants to do anything else, the, the, the uh, time passes and you feel much better uh, having uh, recouped your energy. So what now? Well, I suppose now it's time to figure out exactly what we are going to do. We are still... Are we... Question, actually, are we lost? Do we know where we're going? 
in this woods or are and it's just a matter of enduring the attacks or are we legitimately like have no idea where we are well you were supposed to be on a shortcut yes so yeah <laughs> you're definitely lost <laughs> got chased off yes. our path you're lovely <laughs> well is it daylight outside now uh yes it's morning I'd like to look out the windows and see if we still see the little whatever those things were. The Gortha. Yeah. 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 They're still hunched hunched yeah. around. Um, they're playing those strange serrated instruments. That it just makes this weird noise as they rub the wood together. Um, <clears throat> they just seem to be waiting for you to come out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they are those poised and ready to attack. Good. <laughs> they're ready to attack we can see yeah, that there's and there's hundreds of them so yeah they've even even more have collected yeah. since you've been in here oh That's so the whole place is surrounded at least as far right? as you can see here is my suggestion we yes. knock down this building and let whatever mm -hmm. lives in here fight the Gorthas. Oh, the blessings! You don't knock down a monastery. In the confusion, we climb a tree and wait for it to end. I really hate that. That might actually be our best option. <laughs> and how do you pro propose to knock down the building? Well, I, well, I wasn't thinking everything. knock down. I don't know that we can knock it down, but this, I don't know, maybe there's a way to use whatever's in here against those lure, things. Lure it outside somehow? Or chase it out or free it from in, be, imprisonment here. Uh, you know, what's unleashing a horror upon the woods if it means we can get away and live another day? There's already horrors upon the woods. At least this way, there'd only be one. Exactly. It's it, you know, it's it's one of those. Uh, you know, what are they called when when there's like predators and prey and more the the prey are the predators and then the prey turn into grass and then the the. Vanda, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the the cycle of life. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That was it. Yes. I thought no. you were talking about the trolley problem. <laughs> what? Which I have always referred to as the trolley opportunity. What is a trolley? Um, it's but, like a mine cart, but for rich people. Well, that doesn't sound right, because I am a rich person, and I've never heard of one. You're not rich enough. Still, these people think they're seeing people that aren't there. Isn't that weird? So... Um, <laughs> As you're getting ready, as you're trying to decide what the what the heck you're gonna do, um, Alfred suddenly has a spasm yeah. in front of you all, um, and as he kind of recovers himself, you, Alfred, you realize that something is pulling at your magic. Something further in the monastery is trying to draw on your magic, and it like kind of snuck up on you. Like the effect of it? Are the you okay, Alfred? Effect. Well, that won't do at all. I'm going to pull out my tiny hammer and go walking in the direction of whatever's pulling on my magic. Okay, so that it leads further into the monastery. Now, um, as you go down the stairs, or I'm sorry, not down the stairs, as you go down the hallway, uh, the large uh, arched hallway, um, you see to the right, there's that the stairs that lead up to the bell tower um but this this feeling is more further down do you want to do you guys want to check out the bell tower or do you want to continue on to whatever this you uh, that alfred feels is pulling him well i started off power walking with the intent to confront whatever is is attacking me um but right around the time i passed those bell tower stairs I start to feel a little ridiculous uh, with my with my tiny hammer uh, as my as my only weapon. 
knowing very well that my staff is probably a better weapon anyway and that I can't really fight. Um, so I, I will not... I'm going to try and save face, but I'm also going to slow down. Alfred, okay. what is it? Where are you going? Something's trying to steal my great power. I'm oh, going to go okay. check it. Take it back. Did it take your magic? Can you still do magic? Are you feeling cursed? Do you feel like you might suddenly try to murder us all? It's, try <laughs> it's trying to take my magic. It's failing at it. And that's why I'm going to go kill it. And uh, I'd like to use my <laughs> thaumaturgy on whatever small object is around, uh, maybe behind if he or she can't see it, and just make sure I still have my magic by trying to lift something up. Uh, you do, yeah, yeah. Okay. You you definitely you definitely have control of your magic. Um, now something as a conjure you can do is you can cast a shield on yourself, a magic shield. Um, that's part of your ability. So you just, ca as an action, you just cast it. So you can pre-cast it now if you want. And basically you can take one hit for free. One oh, strike. Yeah, I do remember seeing that. I didn't realize So if you get hit, the shield takes it. There's no saving throw or anything. It just takes the strike. But then it's depleted and you have to cast it again if you want to use it, if you want to use it again. Um, oh. But you can pre-cast it. It'll last for the day. So you can, you could cast it now. Um, and then, you know, whenever you get attacked or something, your shield will take the damage. Um, there's no roll for it. You just do it. You can just do it. All right. I will do that. I do have that on my sheet, but I was thinking of it as something I wouldn't use until. Yeah. A lot of people forget it. about it. So I try yeah. to, <laughs> I try to remind <laughs> you. That. Yeah. Um, I cause it is kind of important. <laughs> every, I just cast that every morning. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's happening We're we've got to the belt, we've got to the tower yeah. stairs, um, is is Alfred going to have a change of mind, or is he going to see what is what is trying to drain his magic? Well, now that if he has has asked me and I've told her where I'm going, I am going to clarify that it's that way. And it's down, right? You said that it's down cellar stairs. No, it's it's actually further down the hall. I'm sorry, I, I mentioned stairs, okay, but there's no the stairs yet. Hall. It's okay. just it's just a long hall with arches, so it's further down into the dark hallway. The magic thief is that way, and it is my intention, but, if possible, to take its magic instead. All right. Wonderful. Let's go kill something. All right, well, cool. So straight on to this magic draining? Yeah. Unless, okay, uh, cool. Unless Mayna, the other did you two have objection. <laughs> I was thinking about dashing up the bell tower and getting a look um, out across the forest with my um, spyglass. To see if ah. I can determine where we're at. Ah. But if everyone's hidden down breaking their lines or yeah, a way yeah. through. Um, Alfric is willing to wait for Vena to do that first. It yes. should just take a few minutes. I'll be right back. Yeah, it wouldn't be long. So uh, you enter what would normally be a claustrophobic kind of spiral stairway. But since you're smaller, it's not as oppressive to you. Um, so you pad your way up. Um, there are more animal skeletons here. Uh, there are also, you notice there were more crunching under your feet as you walk down the, the large hall towards whatever was, was pulling on Alfric's magic. Um, so you get, uh, you get to the top of the tower and you see the bell is askew. And you realize why, because the rope for the bell is over the edge of the tower. Oh, like somebody escaped down the rope? <laughs> yeah, maybe someone climbed down. Hmm. Okay. I'll have to keep that in mind for later. We might use that as an escape route. Do you want to look and see? Uh, yeah, I'll look over the edge. Okay, you're a little short, so you kind of have to jump up a little bit. Um, pull yourself up, yeah. Um, so as you as you as you finally kind of pull yourself up and see over the edge, it is a corpse hung by the neck, hanging over the edge of the tower. It was hanging on a different side than you came in, so that's why you didn't see it hanging there. Um, 
but it as it see as as you look over you hear the bones crack and the head kind of looks up at you like this um and it says something there is no escape no escape you are part of the configuration now and as the thing gazes at you you see its eyes pulsating its its pale eyes pulsating and suddenly the eyes explode and maggots go flying out mm-hmm. flinging out from the force all all over the all over your face yeah i startle backwards and probably stumble down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> okay. um also as you as you look over the gortha throw some spears at you lovely um they do not hit because you're mostly protected by the by the edge you know you're just barely sticking over so it's hard for them to hit you so basically i gave them they would have to roll a six to hit you and i did not roll that so they didn't hit okay. you with a spear so the spear is right. like tung off the belt. But you hear a few spears like chunk into the side of the tower when so you... they're watching and waiting and ready for you any of you to poke uh, out apparently lovely. when lovely. Yeah. returns down yeah. the stairs i'm like what did you do we heard the bell <laughs> she's probably pretty pale <laughs> Yeah, maybe like, a couple of maggots falling out of her hair. Yeah, there's some like yeah. maggots trapped up in my hair, and my face is going pale. I'm like, there's a <laughs> skeleton hanging over the. But anyway, were you yuck. eating from it? What you work on your hygiene? No, no, no. The the bell tower rope was over the edge, and there was uh, someone had hung themselves. It said something about being part of the configuration, and then it spewed maggots from its eyes. Well, that sounds awful. <laughs> I've Let's seen maggots, but and I've know. seen corpses explode from you know gases, but that was that was definitely scary. The corpse spoke <laughs> to you. So it did. Now dead people are talking to her. This is weird. Phil, do do you not have nine other siblings? I heard this once about you. Just Phil. Just me and Phil. Just you two. Yeah. Well, he's my twin he's my twin brother. Is, is he? Have you ever been apart? <laughs> no. No, never. Uh, does Phil know what part of the configuration means? Yes, indeed. This does seem like a question for you. Does... Uh, he whispers to you, Digit. Oh, Phil whispers to me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, what? What does he whisper um, to me? And you, as the others look at you in awe, it's like, is she a, ventrilo- a ventriloquist or something? Um, your Your face suddenly goes blank. And yeah. And then Phil just turns away very creepily and then just is bobbing like he normally does. I'm sorry, did did Phil say something? You don't remember. Uh Sorry, what was that? Okay. <laughs> this is getting stranger and stranger by the minute. It surely is. Um, all right, so Bell Tower wasn't much help. Did you see anything other than a spoofy skeleton Hold on, guys. while you were up there? I'd like to clarify something. Um, Scotty, you, I heard you say that we uh, were wondering if Digit was a ventriloquist. Uh, but we didn't actually hear if you said that Phil said anything um, before you told us we don't remember. Was that on purpose, or did, was there a connection problem there? 
Oh, you you saw you saw Phil come over to her ear. Okay. Or she moved Phil, of course. Phil can't move by himself. Um, and you heard a like a like a whispering. Oh, okay. Uh, and then you saw her face kind of like looking like, huh? And then it, it just kind of went blank. And then Phil just kind of okay, went back I, to his I, position. Yeah. I thought I missed something. His position of rest. <laughs> so that's what you saw. Yeah. All right. And oh, her. Now we're three for three. They're all cursed except for me. That's great. Um, all right. It's about, should... uh, it's about 9.50 in California time. Yes. Um, just, Scotty, because I realized uh, that I have not brought this up to you recently. Well, we do typically take a break about halfway through, so if there's a good stopping point in the next 10 to 20 minutes, that would probably be good. Just for a little... We could stop now if that's... Yeah. yeah. Now would be a good time if you want to do it now. Um, okay. Cool. It's up to yeah. you. I just wanted sure. to be up early in case there yeah. was a better time. Right, yeah. Yeah, now would be a good time. Let's do okay. it now. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and have our 10-minute break. Um, like I said, it's about uh, 9.50-ish here in California. Uh, so we'll see everyone in about 10 minutes. Uh, we're all going to take our short rest and come right back. Thank you, Scotty, and we'll see everyone soon. Welcome back. We've all returned from the void. Some of us nearly died, but we're ready to continue. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Let us continue. All right. So we had this this bell tower incident. Um, and Alfred, you can still full, feel the magic pulling you. Uh, and you see uh, just down the hall, two large doors. Double doors. Open, closed? Uh, they are closed. The and only are, doors that have been, been closed in the place. Are they um, at the end of the hall or on the side? They're at the side, and further on, you see a large staircase that seems to go up to the next level. So getting near the doors... Um, so this could that, be the chapel or something. It looks like it could be like the central room of this floor. Um there have been there have been a few other a few other do open doors as you've come through. They've been seem to be like storage and that kind of thing. Nothing important, uh, but this room seems to be taking up the main part of the lower level. So it's either a chapel or something like that. Okay, um, getting close to the doors, that pull that I was feeling uh, is it coming from there or is it uh, up further on? Definitely from the double doors. Iffy, I'm sorry, no my question. hands are full. Do you think you can open this for me? And then I'm going to I'd be delighted. <laughs> and I will kick those doors open. Okay. Open, okay. not destroy. <laughs> Nothing ever subtle about you, Iffy. <laughs> so the doors swing and slam open. So whatever was asleep um, and going to ignore you <laughs> is now woke and is ready for, for combat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you don't see anything. Yeah! Okay, so <laughs> you see, this seems to be um, indeed a chapel or a worship space. Uh oh, we lost Lisa. No, we didn't. Okay, uh, it seems to be a chapel or a worship space. Actually, we um, did. But she instead of the altar there, froze. there is a large stone kind of disc. Um, that is glowing with runes. Um, and it kind of throws a bluish cast to the room, so you can you can easily see the room. Um, there are pews lined up. Some of the pews are knocked over or broken. Um, there's a lot of crunching under your feet. A lot of animal skeletons in here. Um, mostly rats. It seems like. Uh, but the, 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 the disc seems to kind of pulsate with power, but as you approach closer, uh, you notice that it's cracked. Part of it has fallen to the floor. Um, it kind of, the light kind of pulses. It's almost like a, a slower strobe light where the light kind of pulses. Okay. But this seems to be the object that's, that wants to draw your power, Alfred. 
All right. Um, I just want to point out, we did actually lose Lisa. Um, she appears frozen in, in the stream video. Oh, okay. She's not in Skype at all. Um, Mia, do you want to see if you can get a hold of her? <clears throat> Hopefully she's able to reconnect. Yeah. This is the risk you run with remote games. Maybe she'll have to re maybe she'll have to reboot. Yeah. Reboot. <laughs> well Do you wanna press on? Yeah. I kicked her text, so we'll see what happens there. I, I okay. guess she can she can catch up when she's able to Yeah, we'll catch her up. Yeah. Um so yeah, so Ifidel, you stormed into this room, mm -hmm. made your made yourself known. Um, what would you like to do? How or big did you say like the disc was? I apologize if you said and I missed it. Oh, so what? How big is oh, this? Oh, how disc? big? No, I didn't mention how big. Um, it's about ten feet tall. Oh, okay. Is it three? It's kind of like it's kind of like a ring, like this. More like a ring than a disc, I guess. Oh, and it has runes good. running along, uh, and part of it, part of the one side is cracked and it's fallen off, and the other side is also cracked. Um, when Ifidel uh, kicks open the door and yells, "Ready to fight!" and then a couple seconds go by with <clears> nothing <throat> happening, uh, at that point, Ulfric will also come around the corner with his staff raised and go, "Ha!" <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've so got an ha, arrow. Kind of echoes in the chambers. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I've got my bow and arrow prepared. Okay. Um, Lisa, are you back? I am. I'm. Oh, good, good, good. Hey, just in time. Sorry. Right. So they found what seems to be like a broken portal uh -huh. in this chapel. Um. Okay, Alfred, you see it first. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay. You see it first, uh, because of your dark sight. Uh, you see through the gloom. There is something moving in the back of the chapel, and it's large, very large, and it slithers. It's snake-like. But wait a minute. No, it's not snake-like. It has legs. It's centipede-like. Now I lost camera. So what would you guys like to do? It seems to be kind of slither, making its way, Alfred, making its way around to get closer. How big is it? It's about 25 feet long. Oh, Lovely. gosh, that is not what I was thinking. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the only one that can see it. This must be a huge space in here. Um, uh, you no, they they see it now, but you were the first to see it. Okay, got and it. You can see it more clearly since you have the dark sight. Um, wow. I would like to know um, if if our uh, if our woodland friend can communicate with this beastie at all. Uh, not really, no. Okay. You know, so. you know, like when an animal is afraid, and when you know, so you could back off. You're like, you, you would know when to approach an animal, when to back off. You could sense its kind of moods. This, you're not getting anything from this. This is not a normal animal. Um, does it? And it's approaching us. Yeah. Yeah. Doink. It's kind of coming in from the side, like coming around the chamber from the back, slithering away, slithering around, or right. scurrying around, more like it. It does seem to have legs. That it does. I'm afraid we've lost. Yep. Uh, say the accent. I think we've lost Lisa again. Yeah, it's, but... it seems like we've got a real yeah. bummer of a of a Skype problem on her end. Yeah. All right. Um, until she's back, um, let's go ahead and press forward. Uh, I 
draw my swords. And okay. I say, let's try. I'll try to lure it outside to see if it can take a bite out of our friends. Alfred, work on that thing. Break it. And I point at the, the ring. And then I am going to try to clack uh, uh, my swords together in a way that does not blunt or uh, dull the edges. <laughs> and try to get the centipede's attention and back towards the doors and see if I can get it to follow me. Okay. Um, um, I will... Oh, uh... Go ahead, Scott. I'm sorry, Alfred, did you want to do what she said? No, but I wanted to do something adjacent <laughs> to what she said. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what's adjacent? <laughs> I would like to look right. at the ring thing and instead of breaking it for some reason, see if I can figure out how it works. Right, right, right. Ah. Okay, yeah. so you're going to move up to the center or the far end of the chapel and be closer to the crawling thing. Is, by yourself is, no i think if he was t was trying to get its attention uh maybe okay, my she's trying maybe my spatial perception is off but i was picturing the the ring ahead of me and the and the creature to the to the side okay the ring is back more towards the back of the room okay where it was so it's coming around but it hasn't got to the front yet oh it's coming around the ring but yeah. I'd have to approach Well, it's coming both. around the edge of the room. I'd have to approach both to get to the ring. Uh, in that case... So you would be... If you move up, you would be closer to it than Iffy. Well, no, that's that won't do. Um, I will back out of the room and allow point. Iffy to do her thing first. And if she gets its attention away, then I will go and examine the ring. Okay. Um, what are, are the rest of you kind of pulling back and being ready to fight? Yes, I am a, prepared to fire an arrow on it, Bena. Mm -hmm. um, what are you getting? What are you doing, um, Digit? What are you doing to get ready? Um, I'm pulling my dagger and I'm beginning to uh, concentrate on a prayer. Cool, cool. Okay. So, um, finally, if he. You yes, finally! Something I can it. kill! <laughs> As it crawls into view, you realize the horror that this thing is. This thing is yeah. not a centipede. This thing uh, is torsos stuck together with arm legs. So the arms of the torso are the legs of the centipede and the torsos just mash into each other for, as segments. And the thing is like just scurrying like crazily towards you. And as, you, as, it, as it does, it, its head is kind of flip flapping around like this and the flesh on its face is like, kind of like it's not in place. Like it's just flapping, like it's loose. And then with horror, <laughs> You see why it's loose, because the skin pulls back and reveals a mouth, a large maw, that's just full of razor sharp teeth. And it just lunges towards you. Okay. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> uh, I think Can I, I get have an a arrow on of this like... creature. <laughs> okay, so here's how it works. All right. So in, in, in this. slash hag boom, the players always go first. Unless the uh, players are surprised, they always go first, and they can determine their own order they want to go in. Okay, so it would make sense that if he would go first because you're closest to it, right? Indeed. Or you, we could have Vena go first. She's got a she's got a bow ready. So who would who would like to go first? As this thing uh. lunges forward. I'm happy to go first. Okay, cool. So yeah, what would you like to do? Maybe in my way, so I'm going to try and find a, a better position. Nice. All right. I will take a uh, my double-handed strike at it just to keep it a, a distance away from me as I am still backing towards the door, still with the plan of luring it uh, to follow me down the hallway and turn it loose on these... Uh, uh, go with a friend outside. So I'm going to roll my 3d6. Mm -hmm. 
and then tell me the highest number you get. Oh, that was an absolutely dreadful roll. Uh, the highest number I got was two. Was two. Okay, that is not enough to hit. Um, you could, you need a, you need a three to, you need a three to hit. So you could use a karma, or you can actually take a karma. Whenever you fail a roll, you get a karma. Oh. But you can uh, only get one a turn. You can, it, no matter how many rolls you fail, you can only get one karma a turn. But you can't. You have the decision of going ahead and failing, or using your karma and hitting. I will use one karma and hit. Okay. Okay. Nice. So you discard that karma, and yeah. you do one wound to it. So every every weapon in the game does one wound. But yes. that's not the that's not the end of it because if you get a six, you can crit. And you keep rolling until you don't get a six, right? So you could kill anything. You could kill a dragon with one hit. If you're just freaking the freaking luckiest person in the world, you can <laughs> kill a dragon. <laughs> it's just like you, you just have yes. to be super lucky. So yeah, so every weapon will do one hit. So you do one strike or one strike, I should say. So you do one strike to it. One strike. Um, you slash into one of the torsos and you're continuing to back up. So who's next? I have uh, perched myself on a pew. You said there were some benches in here, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll take an arrow shot at it. Nice, nice. So go ahead and roll. You a three to hit. Cat. Cat. Uh, that is a five. Got okay, a five that's a hit. Uh, would you like to use a karma and potentially get a crit, or do you want to just go ahead and do that wound? Uh, let's let's try do a crit. Spend okay, cool. karma on that. So she's spending a karma to get a crit. And now she rolls one die. If she gets another six, she crits. I dropped a two that time. Okay, yeah. So that would be very expensive to buy that. So yeah, uh, you would actually wouldn't have enough karma. Um, you could roll your hero hero die to do that. You get well, you only get one a game, so that's very, you know, <laughs> you may you may want to save that. But uh, okay, so you hit, so you did another strike to it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's appalling. I think I think I think Phil peed a little. Um, <laughs> I don't you feel a little trickle on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Do you know anything to to stop horrible abominations? It'll help. <laughs> Um, can Phil point anything out in the room that, that I can Phil use? At you. Oh, did he? <laughs> My palms are all sweaty now. Um, <laughs> Maybe it was your imagination. <laughs> is there anything that Phil can point out in the room that is useful? Oh, right, right. Um, uh, Phil doesn't say anything. Phil, you disappoint me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I will. Um, I will use my slippery well i can't use it to to attack but i will no. move up to attack okay so you want to you want to go up and stab it with your dagger i to try to dagger yeah dagger. okay so slit dagger its dagger. belly all yeah. right uh roll it so you roll one die okay and you need a three to hit i got a six. Oh, roll it again <laughs> to see if you get another six no i got a four okay you could spend two karma and do another hit yeah. You want to yeah. do that? Yeah. Okay, roll that. it again then. Oh, I got a one. Okay, nice. Yeah. Two hits. Good job. So you do a nice <laughs> slit in the belly. Um, as you do that, um, it it cuts part of it off, mm -hmm. like a ten foot section off, and then as it kind of falls and that section scurries off by itself, you see a head begin to emerge from the other segment. So now there's two. Now there's one about 10 feet long and one about 15 feet long. Oh, you could have warned me, Phil. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> well, I'm assuming this is the configuration of a lovely. Uh, okay, right. so Alfred. 
So I am in the hallway where I ducked behind the door waiting for Iffy to lead this thing away. Uh, mm -hmm. And while I am there, I shall pull out my scroll of Gilmoon's unstuckness and mm -hmm. read it to whoever you read these things to. Um, it says, for a scene, you cannot be grappled, webbed, glued, slowed, or restrained in any way. So I'll cast that on myself. Um, and I believe the rules allow an action, a movement, and a free action, yeah? Um, right, so right. I, so the I, scroll would be an action. Okay. And then uh, I'm just going to turn around into the room, start running for that, that circle, and I'm, as I go, I'm just going to yell, Phil, you take that one! <laughs> nice, you nice. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm staying here. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> so it's t my turn. So the, the shorter centipede-like thing pushes itself off the ground, uh, leaps toward Iffy... Yeah. Uh, arms good. outstretched, ready to grab you in a nice hug. <laughs> oh, and it hits. So oh, it, boy. it, you suddenly see um, if he get get knocked over as the thing just wraps all the arms uh, from the torsos around around her, and she she uh, she falls back to the ground, and it's gnashing at her face. This is immensely Trying to take her head off. <laughs> Does the fact that I'm heavily armored deflect any of this? Okay, um, that is a good question. Um, since the thing did not do damage to you, uh, yeah, the armor wouldn't come into play. It just okay. grappled you. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It didn't hurt you. It just grappled. At this point, <laughs> you can feel its drool like dripping into your face. Uh, it's it's uh, it, it's. Uh, acrid drool dripping into your face but uh yeah besides that you're unhurt besides the smell whew. Uh, <laughs> so the um the other one um alfred sees you running for the portal and does a beeline to you leaps up the same maneuver um it's more more like a centaur maneuver this time because it's longer so it kind of rears up like this with arms and it hits you so it, gra it tries to grab you but since you use the spell of unstuckness you cannot be grabbed so you just uh, instantly slide away it's very unpleasant it, it, but at least I'm yeah. not held still by it <laughs> <laughs> and it's not holding you uh, you can see the head gnashing um, so there is that <laughs> but it does not have you it does it does that it did not grab you okay great. all right so that's their turn we're back to you guys all right um as uh i think it's me at the top of the round unless anybody else wants to go first um do we do we reset the the order every turn you can or go in any order okay yeah um as a free action i well actually this is a good question uh in terms of figuring out how to kill this creature, is there a lore role that we do, uh, or equivalent, or...? Oh, I see what you're saying. Right, right, yeah. right. Um, do you... What What were your inclinations? My inclinations uh, were Sweep, Swift Attack, and Born Blessed. Oh, okay, okay. I was thinking you had the... That's not you that has the escape. Okay. No. Um, so, uh, yeah, like if you would know this creature, yeah, you've never seen this creature before. You don't know anything about this. This is some kind of rogue magic that, you know, must be some kind of evil rogue magic. So yes. trying to trying to figure out the physiology of something like this is kind of a fool's errand, you realize. All right, but, you well, know, hey, it's always it always it always doesn't hurt to hit something in the head, right? That's true. Tried and true. And I'll just scream, Alfred, it's magic, it's your problem, figure out how to stop this thing! And I stab <laughs> it in the face. All right, nice, nice. Stupid. Okay, so roll three All dice okay. and to give me the highest number. Yes, in the interest of fairness, do I take any penalty if I'm grappled? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, actually, you would, you would lose one of the dice, so you roll two. Ah! 
I'm just gonna re-roll that one. Yes. Anything that hits the, the floor table. is a re-roll. <laughs> that is much better. That's a six. Okay, roll it again. All right. For the record, the second dice was a five, so. That's a six again! Oh, roll it Woo! again! Alright. Go, Sarah. And a Go, three. Sarah. Go, All right, Sarah. so you do two rolls right. to it, but you were going for the head, right? I sure was. Okay, uh, since you got a crit, um, you drive your swords right into the maw, down its gullet, and then just kind of pull them out and just. Uh, Gore just goes splats splats across the room as it flies off your blades. The thing rears up and just boom, just slams to the the uh, stone, the flagstone floor, and just twitches a little bit. But you think you've done it in. Ah, take that. <laughs> Never mind, nice. I fixed it myself. <laughs> well done, Ify. Bless. All right. All right, there's still the one that's going after uh, Alfric. Um, I would Having like to go it. next, if nobody has oh, Go ahead. Uh-huh. Um, I, how far am I from reaching this ring to be able to study it or read any markings and try and figure out what it does? Uh, you're right next to it. Okay. Um, So, glancing at it, does it have any markings or runes or anything? Uh, it does, yes. Um, I don't know if this would apply here, given the language, but uh, when I, in character creation, I gave myself the aspect of speed reader. Uh -huh. um, so, what can I glean about how to work this thing? Uh, I love that. Okay. <laughs> well, quite a bit, actually, because you are trained in magical mysteries. So that gives you two dice. And then um, I'll give you a bonus die for the speed reader thing, which is pretty excellent. So um, to, to, kind of, to kind of figure this out, um, you, you still need a six to do it, but you get three dice. All right, well, let's see what happens. It's my first rule. I got a six. One of them's a six. Okay, you got it, okay. Ooh. Does it matter um, <laughs> that one of them's also a one? No, it does not. You just okay. take the highest. Yep. All right. Yep. Just take the highest. Okay, so um, you decipher that this was indeed a teleportal. Um, so the people must have been coming, coming here through this through this portal. Um, that's this place is so reclusive and so out of the way that that you know and these people, the the people that you learned about in the log. We're not necessarily fit to travel and adventure and all this kind of thing. They're they're great thinkers, they're not great fighters. So it's like this was a safe way to get them. Must have been a safe way to get them here. But something has damaged the portal. So you realize that it's not in operating condition. Like you can't use it to escape. Um, it's too badly damaged. Um, Do I? But think you could. Hmm? I was. Uh, do I think that if I had more time, we might be able to repair it? Uh, it would take. Um, it, it, no, it's because once once something like this is like the integrity is broken, it's kind of broken the spell. Okay, so this right? is useless to me. Like if you break a wand, it's you can't put it back together. It's, it's the spells broken so yeah you can't you can't you, it's not something you could repair um but it is um something that uh, a chunk of this might be useful to you and there is a there is a hand sized chunk um that you could grab okay um learning all of that was that my action um no, that is not your action. Then for my action, that's a I free action. Okay, for my action, I would like to cast a spell. Okay. Uh, I am a shadow weaver, and the remaining human centipede. Um, I would like. It has eyes, right? Yes. I would like to sheathe, however many eyes it has, in darkness so that it can't see oh like make it blind yeah 
Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so this is great because now we get to get, get to do how the spell system works. Okay, so what happens is he's told me what he wants to cast within his school of magic, which is totally legitimate. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a defense and I'm going to tell you what it is. Okay, so hold on. So I'll roll a die. I could roll more dice depending on what if something was more magic resistant, but this just 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 gets one defense die, and so I rolled a four. Okay. So now you have a decision to make. You can cast a spell at a power level of one to three. That's one to three dice. You have to equal or beat my roll, okay, with one, two, or three dice. If you if you equal or beat my roll, the spell casts and it works. If you roll any ones, the spell does not work. So you can see how rolling more dice is more dangerous because the spell you could roll more you could roll ones, right? right. But you can also take spell burn, which is a wound on yourself, to still cast the spell if you roll any ones. Right, I remember all that. What I don't remember is uh, if I can I spend karma points on a spell casting roll. No, you cannot because the winds of magic, the way they work, you can't spend karma points. But you can um, you can use your hero die to re-roll any die, okay, including a spell die. Then I am gonna re I am gonna use two dice to try and beat that four. Oh, okay, cool. To try to equal or beat the four. Uh, I got a two and a five. Okay, you beat it. So um, awesome! And you didn't roll any ones, so that's perfect. So yeah, you beat it. So you blind the creature. So you guys see its head engulfed in like a, a sphere of darkness, <clears throat> and it's kind of <laughs> writhing around. And if there's anything, if there's any time left in my turn, I'll pick up that rock. Okay, nice, you got it. And you know, you know it's working because it's kind of like it's not heading towards you anymore. It's just confused. It's just kind of flailing around, you know, to anything, try to get anything that's in range. Awesome. All right. So it's uh, it's its turn. Okay. So it is going to try to. Wait, did, well, uh, didn't um, Digit and Bena need to go? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did not. We we missed two characters. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> okay. So um, since it's uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, who wants to go next? Digit, um, do you want to go? I can. I'm just holding my arrow. Um. So. I'm sorry. I, I apologize about the Skype issue. Can you describe the room to me? Yeah, it's it's like kind of a large uh, rectangular rectangular room, um, about fifty feet long, uh, forty feet wide. Huh. Uh, is this on an upper floor? No, it's it's like the biggest room on this on the on the lower floor. Okay. On the ground floor. And what is what what is in this room beside this creature? Uh, there's this weird. Uh, well, Alfred found out that it's a portal. Okay. It was a portal, okay. but it's malfunctioning. It's been broken. It's like a Stargate portal, big round ten exactly. foot diameter yeah. thing mm -hmm. of rock with rooms mm -hmm. on it. Is right. there anything else in this room besides that? A bunch of pews, and me, and tons of uh, tons of little animal skeletons. Okay. They crunch under your feet. Okay. Um, how long is this thing now? Uh, the what's left is fifteen feet. Okay. So it can't see. No. Um. So I'm gonna try to confuse it even more with this blackness around its head, so that it, so that we people can get in and get shots at it. I want to run around the back of the thing, and I have a bell in my inventory. Yeah. And I'm gonna tie the bell, or, or try to loop the bell around its its backside, so that it will hear its the backside go after its own tail. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. That's nice. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, um, since it's blinded, this will be this will definitely be much easier. So um, you're going to have to roll a five to do that, but you do get two dice. Okay. Nope, that's a two and a six. Okay, you do it. Uh, so you loop 
the string around the, the tail end of it. And it's, you know, ding, 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 ding. Awesome. ding a lingy. Nice. And so it seems even more upset and more confused. <laughs> so it's Eventually thrashing we'll around, smashing into uh, pews, flailing like a fish out of water. And that that would be my action, right? Yep. Okay, so no no attacks for me. That's fine. Hmm. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay. I rolled a five on my attack die. Nice, nice. That is a hit. Yeah. Uh, do you want to spend the karma and make that a, try to go for a crit, or just go? I will do that. Yes. Okay. And I rolled a one. Lovely. Okay, so that oh, is no. still one strike. Okay. So now, now we got everybody. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the thing is, the thing is thrashing around, and the bell, you know, is going off. So it's like it can't even hear you know it can't hear very well where anybody is so um i am going it's gonna it's gonna just try to lunge at alfric the closest character but it's not gonna have a very good chance of hitting okay it missed um so it slams um it slams into the portal um almost knocking it over um but yeah it's still Still thrashing around, so it's back to you guys. Okay. So, um, so also, uh, Steve, uh, Alfred, as long as, uh, now when you have a spell like this cast, it, it takes concentration to maintain it, but as long as you don't get hit with a six, you can, you can just keep the spell going. And does the concentration uh, impede my ability to cast other spells? It does, yes. You can, you can do another action, but you can't cast another spell. Once you cast another spell, the first one goes away. Got it. And yeah. would using my staff's Mystic Bolt, does that count as casting a spell? No, it would not. All right. Uh, no, you could do that. I'll just do that. I'll shoot it in the head with the Mystic Bolt. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, normally... Um, uh, you would need a three to hit, but I'm gonna since it's blinded, I'm gonna give you a two. You just need okay. to roll a two or better on a single die. Six. All right, you got it. Uh, now wow. the B mystic bolt cannot crit, uh, so you just do one. You just do one strike. So nice. Awesome. Oh. I will. <laughs> okay, you else? see it. You see okay. it kind of separating again. Oh, oh no. Like about to split. Well, somebody kill it before it can. No! I yell, and I'm getting up and just running at it. Not this time! <laughs> and I will try. <laughs> if nobody else minds, I will go ahead and just. Yeah, I'm gonna plastic dual weapon attack. Okay, cool. Into All the right, nose. So, um, roll to hit. Uh, if, you get right. a if you get a crit, you can take the hit. All right. Nope, I got a one, a one, and a three. Okay, the three does hit, so you do another oh, wound. Excellent. So it's it, it's just it's thrashing around so wildly, you just don't get it. You just don't get a good hit. Yeah. Um, as it as it kind of reels back and you slash, the head kind of flings back and you hit the torso, it splits. Uh, so now there's another one, another one just crawling around. So it's they're about they're about okay. seven eight feet long each. Uh, so the one still has the globe of darkness on its head. The other one, another head pops out and it's ready to go. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> That's <I will>. my turn. <laughs> shoot an arrow in the fresh head. Nice. Uh, so that would be a three to hit. Uh, there's a four on the dice. All right, nice. That's a strike. Okay, Digit. Um, so Digit is what unholy kind of monster is this? And pulls out his holy water and is going uh -huh. to 
something in, on the creature and see because it clearly must be some kind of demon or devil spawn. Right. Yeah. All right. So do you want to hit the one that has the globe of darkness on it or the other, the fresh one? The fresh one, right in the face. Okay, right in the face. All right. Uh, so you need to roll a three to hit it. I rolled a two, but I'd like to use a karma. Okay, okay. That does hit. So the holy water vial smashes in its face um, and it reels back from you. Okay. But you're, you're not sure what's going to happen. Okay. And Didn't seem to like it, but maybe that was just because it had a glass bottle shattered in its face. <laughs> See, Phil, this is how you do it. He's like, Wink. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, everybody's gone, right? Yes. Okay, okay. So, um, Digit, uh, you see the thing, um, you piss it off, so it's lunging for you, um, but as it, do as it does, uh, you see the flesh start to pull back from its face, um, and it, la it lands with a thump right in front of you, uh, spread eagle right in front of you, and you see the, fl you see the flesh and the bones dissolving. So it's just a kind of a gooey mess. Ah. So the holy water did seem to have an effect on it. Yes. Okay, so nice the other one is... Digit. <laughs> so the other one's crashing around, and it's going for Iffy, but it is blind. All right. And it totally misses. You easily dodge its clumsy attack, because uh, the, bell, the bell and it being <laughs> blind is not helping its senses at all. Uh -huh. Okay, so I am done. Back to you guys. Uh, the the one that digit splashed is is out out of commission. It's now? toast. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. It's dissolved. I would like to cast another spell. By All right. Way, by way of altering the existing spell. I would like to okay. use the shadow that is wreathing the thing's head to crush its head. Okay. Um, the shadows actually have no weight or volume, oh, that's so right. they cannot crush. They can't do stuff like that. Um, They're just shadows. All right. Well, someone else go while I think about it. I want to do more spells, but I can't think of anything useful. <laughs> uh I'd be delighted to jump in, Avery, if nobody else minds. Go, go, uh, go. All right. I will go for the one that is blinded mm -hmm. and who tried to eat me. Yep. And again, you know, classic double double swords to the to the mouth. It's two to hit, but if you get a crit, you can take the head out. Yes. Ah, I had a five. Okay, you could. And I assume I can't use a karma to get to a crit, You can, right? yes. You I can? You can use a karma to make that a six. I will use that karma to make it a six. Okay. <laughs> Roll again. All right. All three, right? Uh, no, just, just one. one. Just one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that will be a two. Okay. That, it, that did not confirm the crit, so you just got, got the one strike. Can I use another karma? You would have to use, you have to use one pip per number. Since you rolled two, you'd have to use four karma to do that. You could do that. I do it. But it would be four karma. I use all, I have five karma remaining. I use four of them. Okay, cool. I yeah, critted. so that that confirms the crit. Um, and time. you take it out. So how do you do that? How do you take it out? What's nice. it look like? Um, I am going to just, you can't really do any fun moves you can't do any you know fancy training so it's very frustrating i missed the other one and so this time i'm just lining up my shot taking my time and then driving very methodical very butcher like it's nice, not nice. pretty but it works yep exactly <laughs> it gets the job done it does <laughs> cool all right so it drops and uh, you don't see anything else moving. Seems like you've taken care of 
-hmm. problem. And that was the blinded one, so Alfred, yes. you are free to act. Yeah, that was the blinded one. Um, mm -hmm. that's all of them, then. That's it. Oh, isn't there one more? Did, I thought the holy water one was still on its feet. No, no it dissolved. No, it oh. dissolved. Yeah, it, it splatted in front of uh, Digit it. and dissolved. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, so now that that's over, uh, Ulfric looks uh, looks as though this whole battle was just a, an annoying nuisance to him, and he picks up he he holds up the rock that he picked up and tries to examine it and see if there's any any immediate idea about what we might be able to do with this magical thing. Right. It may come in handy at some point, but right now. Um, the magic uh, from it is almost like a battery um, that you can drain from. Okay. So basically the effect of this stone is that whenever you roll a spell roll, you can ignore a one. You can ignore one one that you roll. Nice. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and keep, uh, keep that then. Do I need to be holding Ow. it to use it that way? Uh, you just have to have it on your person. I'm going to stick it in the bag then. Yep. Right. That's heavy. Alfred, do you still feel the drain on your magic? Have we, have we solved the problem, as it were? <laughs> you, you actually still feel the portal trying to to pull pull your magic. But you're, it's, you're not in danger of it actually happening. Unless you just are in such bad shape that you're just so weakened that you can't con con contain your magic, the likelihood of it happening is almost nil. Okay, like, it so can't overcome your normal resistance. So I know that I can't repair It's just thing. malfunctioning. Yeah. yeah. So I, is there any way for me to stop it from doing this thing that it's doing to me? Um, you could try to break it further maybe you could you guys could push it over it might also do something bad you don't you're not quite sure it could there could be a uh, an arcane explosion <laughs> my um. <laughs> my inclination if it's not something i could just turn off but it's also not I endangering me is not to break the powerful magic artifact right you feel it's risky yeah. to do that yeah. well that's not why it's more like you know, this thing's important and useful and we might be able to fix it one day, so... Right, yeah, yeah, I mean, it could could come into use at, at some point. Yeah. Um, is there anything in this room by way of books or scrolls documentation? Oh, yeah, it seems to be um, bare. Like, there's really no books or anything here. Um, whatever re religious paraphernalia or whatever they would have used maybe for worship or ceremonies is there is there's nothing there it's pretty bare it's kind of strange actually digit yes do you find it odd that the portal which is an arcane device but also kind of the front door is in the worship sanctuary? Well, I believe that since this is a temple of the spheres, uh. perhaps it was a way to visit other spheres in their religious ceremony. Ah, that does make sense, of course. That is what I suspected as well. If this thing is a portal, that... I mean, that's a solution to our problem. Can we use this to get ourselves out of these woods? It that is, seems like it'd be a great solution, but it's just... it's not working. It is broken as hell. Mm -hmm. A team of wizards working for weeks might be able to repair it, but we don't have that ability right because it's not just a physical object it's the you know the ritualistic magic that would create something like this powerful on yeah. the plus oh, yeah. side 
I've stolen this rock. <laughs> Very happy it's to a, see you, Al. That's it's a handsome rock you have there, Alfred. <laughs> it's a magic rock. And it rock. does have a bit of a dweamer, like it glows a little bit Ooh. of its own light. Nice. Phil thinks your rock is very nice. Phil is a wise digit. Finger. <laughs> I'm digit. Person. Brother. <laughs> I like your brother. Wait a minute, this is confusing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, it happens. We get confused all the time. It happens. I'm Phil the finger. <laughs> Naturally. All right, Bye. so what now? I am going to take a closer look at these uh, at these monsters. Do we? And I'm just going to ask Alfred. I'm like, are any of these those famous scholars that came here? Is this uh, Vena? Does this does one of these look like the 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 creature you encountered in the hallway, the old man with the beard? Oh no, not really at all. Take that a was... close look. At this horrible thing, and let me know your thoughts. Alfred is right absolutely doing that. Yeah, get, get right, get right in there. Look at this. Yes. Thing. Hmm. I'm, I'm. Twitches. Nope. I'm not recognizing anything. All I saw was a bearded wow. man in a hood. Yeah. I dissected so many cadavers and made so many humbugs <laughs> at university that this is just nothing to me. So I will. I don't know if I even know what any of these famous scholars actually look like, <laughs> but uh, do I recognize any of the body parts, the head parts of them anyway? Oh, I see what you're saying. Not particularly, no. Okay. No distinguishing tattoos on their arms or anything. <laughs> well, no, yeah, no, no particular and marks or anything. Um, <laughs> Rogue has been mermaid tattooed down his bicep. I love mom. No, why does nobody do identifying tattoos anymore? I would be so yeah, you don't recognize any identifying marks. Okay. Um, we are still faced with the problem of being surrounded. Indeed. Maybe the idea should. of releasing that creature to uh, fight the others outside, unfortunately, did not work, Alfred. Well, something. So, ah, th this that. is strange. Um, Alfred and um, Digit, there seems to be a mix-up of powers here. Like, the holy water destroyed that thing, but it seemed to be like... Uh, you know, an abomination of magic where magic went, ran wild and, and mutated something, right? Um, where holy water wouldn't work on it, right? It wouldn't work on something like that. But it did work on this. So it's like there's this weird mix of arcane and uh, holy power, um, divine power. Could that, uh, Alfred make a lot of sense. to himself, explain this weird fog uh, that I sensed w earlier this magical uh, haze yeah you you feel that yeah that's remember how you were thinking about it that snaps forward in your brain that's it that's the key that's why I couldn't figure it out because it's a mix it's a mix of the two powers so so arcane and divine magic have blended together here are like colliding yeah, colliding and warping, warping things. Right. But why? Indeed. Listen, uh, if nobody has any ideas, Alfred, uh, I'm going to go upstairs and ask Vena's uh, skeleton friend in the bell tower if he's got any further ideas. Um, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go up to the bell tower, um, and, uh, just lean over the edge, uh, to look for that talking skeleton. Yeah, that's what I was about to suggest. Let's go question the dead guy. Do you want to come with me? Yeah. Uh, we, we need Vena. She can tell us where he is. They, they're friends are yes. right, so... I am not inclined to go there again, but I will. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, wonderful, Vayner. You can make the introductions. But by the 
twisted grin of the twins from Froggy Bottom. That creature's ugly. I want to get out of here. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, unless anybody else has anything, we're back up at the top of the tower. Look over the edge very carefully so I don't get stabbed with a spear. Um, is it still there? Uh, hold on one second. <clears throat> okay, so before... <laughs> back up a little bit. Before we get there... Yes, sorry. You, when, you come out of the, when you come out of the chamber that you were in, you realize that there's a large staircase leading up to the next level um and uh you hear a cackling from up the stairs <laughs> and then the kind of padding of feet like something must be not a ghost it must be race unless it's a ghost that has bare feet <laughs> That did not sound inviting. No. Well, it sounds like several friends of mine. I'm sure. Uh, sorry. Uh, apologies. Did you say this was at the top of the bell tower, or is this a different? No, this is the top of the. Room? When you come out of the main chamber you were in, this is the yeah. top of the stair from the top of the stairs. It's like a large stairway that leads up to the next level. Uh, you it. hear this cackling, and. Um, You've come for the the confrontation. You've come for the for the for the, for the, the ritual. Really happened. <laughs> Is that your skeleton speaking? Is he? No, uh, it it, uh, it doesn't sound skeleton. like the skeleton that was hanging. The skeleton that was hanging over the bell tower had like really raspy voice. Like, uh, well, yeah, that was. This is more something completely crazy different. Crazy high. Oh, Vanna, sorry. <laughs> Do we? Yes, Vanna. Which which horror would you say that sounds more like that you've seen so far? The skeleton or the horrifying visage of the old man with the beard? Or is this a uh, new one? Nothing like either of those. The old right. man was mumbling. I could not make out what he was saying, and the skeleton was very uh, raspy, like this. Got it. <laughs> so noted. You've come for the configuration. <laughs> I think we just killed your configuration. I'm going to yell up the stairs. Excuse me. What is the configuration? It's the important thing. It's the thing. It's the main thing. Yeah! Why you don't you come downstairs? Like... Sorry. You go ahead. Uh, I have something to show you! You converse like a dog that has gained the power of speech. <laughs> I am no I dog. You can call me Jack! With a Q and a U and E. <laughs> Wouldn't that be Jacques? I don't. Jacques, yes! Oh, how funny. That's exactly what you call me, Alfred. That's a pleasure to meet you. This is Phil. <laughs> you still don't see him yet. He's up the stairs. The stairs kind of wind up. Will you come down here where we can see you? I need you up here. I don't I think so. I show you something. I think you should come down here and tell us about it instead. No. How do we get out of here? I can tell you that. Yes, come tell us. Upstairs. <sighs> do you plan to do us harm? Phil would not like that. I don't plan on it. What do you plan? <laughs> to tell you things. Are they you things? You must know things. Is this forbidden knowledge that will drive us insane with the gibbering and the yammering? <laughs> of course not. I've met some spirits who suggest otherwise. <laughs> I'm going to lean over and, and say to Alfred, honestly, at this point, I'm just about ready to, to, to risk it all if it means uh, 
we can stop having this conversation. Uh, what do you say? And I'll draw the swords again. I've got food, my pretties. Mm. So do I. It's that dry me food. Up. <laughs> Delicious food. Okay, but ask answer me this question. How many limbs do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Um four. Two of each type? <laughs> um yeah. Just four? Yes. All right. We're coming up. And I will, before we do, I, I will stop everyone and like, I'm sure you all have thought of this already, but just for the record, we're not going to eat anything it offers us. Is, is that clear <laughs> to everybody? Just, just making sure we're all on the same page. Yes. We can have a snack no, before we to, go up. We, we need know to. not to eat evil food from ensorcelled places. Thank you, Mother. I know and you're much, hungry, Phil, but I don't think it's a good idea. And as much as I miss my grandmother's coney and potato soup, I am not so hungry that I would eat something this person would offer. Okay, just double checking. Well, now Phil is away. Out. Um. Yes, I will lead. Uh, I will lead right behind you. I lead from the middle. <laughs> so I shake um, my head, but I know I know my place in this party. So and who's who's yeah. you're lead, you're leading the way, I'm right? The way. Okay. Heavily armored and swords out. You are, you are, you're ready to go. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as he hears you step up the stairs, you hear his feet kind of pad off away from the upper staircase. Um, you assume down a long hall that's up there. Uh, so he, uh, uh, as you, as you come to the top of the stairs, you see there, the, the hallway is this line with doors. Um, some of them are open and you can hear people talking in them. And when you look in to see what's going on, uh, you see, uh, mostly, um, older men, but other, also other races, um, speaking, um, of the, the consequences of this decision that they're doing, the configuration. And then when oh. you step, if you step into the room, they just kind of, they just kind of fade in the mist. Um, and the rooms are dusty old and old, but they've, uh, and rat eaten, but they've, you know, they were n nice furnishings at one point. Um, all did I right. hear their conversation before they dissipated mm -hmm. or was it just iffy? Um, yeah, you all heard it. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You all heard this. More ghosts. When we step back out of the room, does the conversation start again? No. Ah, okay. From what I heard, right. do but I... But they're like memories or remnants. From what I heard, do I think that they were maybe discussing some sort of great spell to bring the spheres into alignment in some way? Maybe merge them or keep them permanently connected? Uh, does that seem like what they were talking about? It's not clear. It's not okay. clear what they're trying to do. But they, they're they in a place... But it, that does seem to be the gist of it. Okay. Yeah. Based on er everything we know about this temple and the portal downstairs and who's here, that seems like they tried some sort of mucking about with the multiverse. Yes. Sure. I don't know what that means. It means that the gods are unhappy with their choices. And they have they have intruded where the gods did not want them. Or, or it means that they were 
simply not as intelligent as they believed they were and made a mistake and blew themselves up. More importantly, oh, is, is the owner of that voice visible in the room? Yes. No. Jacques? Down this way! Wonderful. Down the end of the hall, you see kind of a double doors. Well, I... shall we be lured deeper into this do they awful have, place? Do they have, like, handles on the doors? Mm-hmm. Uh, can I, from where I am, thaumaturgy and open one of the doors? Um, the thaumaturgy can't, it's not strong enough to actually open a door. Okay. It can move like a glass or something like that, but it can't move like a door. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. it's just not strong enough. <clears throat> All right. Well, well then... did someone say doors? Let, let's go. <laughs> right beside you, Iffy. Right behind and the door you. Is, is, you. The door is ajar. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a door. Do any... I was going to say that, Steve. <laughs> what did you say there? I didn't hear you. I said I thought it was a door. But it's a jar. Don't uh, worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, do any of the apparitions... Well, let me ask Vanna. Do any of these apparitions appear to be your ghost from downstairs? Phil wants to know. <laughs> Uh, they didn't. Mia, you're muted. The ghost I saw was uh, in a robe and a beard. These these are different. I will... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, does anybody have anything else to do? Because I'm just going to stand up right in front of the door. You know, Foot ready for kicking and just look at like everybody be like, oh, are we doing this? Are we, are we all any last moves? Any last comments? I anybody? haven't, I, this isn't Phil. I have an idea that probably won't work, but I want to run it by you, Scotty. Mm -hmm. As a shadow weaver, I have some influence over light and darkness and the interplay thereof. These apparitions that we've been seeing you described as like recordings could i possibly restart the one we just saw part of could i find a uh, way to tap into it actually yes you could Ooh, i wanna so i'm gonna make a big show of it like i'm gonna grab the staff with both hands and concentrate <laughs> and, and see what i can make happen um should I roll for this? No, you don't have to roll. Awesome. Even better. Then I'm going to make a bigger show of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like... So, um, do okay. We so leave? yeah, it's, it's almost like a living like tape, you know, it, you know, it, 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 it goes back and then you can make it go forward and backward. Can we glean any new information now that we can see the whole thing and, and rewind it if we need to? Right. Um, actually, yes. Um, the configuration uh, is something um, called the uh, Thagden configuration. And when, they, when you hear that, you know what it is. And actually... Digit, you know what it is too. Okay. It's a, a theory or philosophy or a theory that you can break the spheres apart. So you could break the divine sphere from the mortal sphere. So in effect, the gods would have no longer any influence on the world. And some people say this is mad. Some people say that this is – we should govern ourselves. We should not be governed by these care, you know, divine beings that don't care, really care about us. 
Why should we be under their thumb? We can break free. Would this not? Also... So it's this very controversial uh, ritual or spell, powerful spell. Would this not also eliminate our access to any afterlives that may be on those other planes? Uh, is... Yes. That is certainly something to take into consideration. But it would also mean that you wouldn't you if you were in, to go in torment, you would never go into torment either. That's true. Digit. My yes. understanding of your abilities tells me that they were not successful in bringing about this configuration, at least not entirely. It seems that it, at least it appears that they may have made an attempt and were unsuccessful. Your holy water destroyed that arcane abomination. I wonder Indeed. if their partial success took effect only in a localized area here in this temple. One can only hope. The muddling of arcane and divine energies is perhaps due to the fact that in this place we are our own gods. Oh, you tread tread carefully, my friend. <laughs> Never! <laughs> tread carefully, my friend. Digit uh, gets a... Or not Digit. Um, <laughs> what's your fingers? Phil. Phil. <laughs> Phil gets a little agitated <laughs> <laughs> so is it phil getting agitated or is it digit uh manifesting through phil <laughs> <laughs> the world may never know agitated at you <laughs> phil is my favorite character <laughs> cut it out it's calm down he doesn't realize entirely what he's saying he is just trying to think things through just calm down all right no I'm not going to tell him that. Um, <laughs> it's a... It, it, I believe we have to think about this in the terms of parent and child. If a child is unhappy with what the parent is doing, even though the parent is taking care of the child, the child considers running away. But this is always considered petulant, and the child will then come to terms with it and come back into the warm embrace of their parent. And this is something that we have to consider here, uh, that perhaps the effort to detach ourselves from the divine was in, well, basically petulant. And the divine is now unhappy with that choice. Dinner is ready. Yeah, yes. I'm still standing in front of the doors, like with my leg back, ready to kick. And I've been watching you two talk this whole time. Just, uh, I'll be done. <laughs> I'll be done. Like iffy, and I kind of like reach over and I like push the door gently with my hand. <laughs> I let it happen. Yeah, I just watch it. I'll, I'll absolutely let it happen. So you smell. A rancid smell uh, of excrement, piss, um, and burned rat. Uh, uh, as you come in, this once grand chamber is kind of in shambles, but it seems to be a massive library. Like there are just tomes and tomes of books uh, lining the shelves. Most of them in horrible shape. Um, so you you hear you hear the man say, "Oh, it, it, come in and have some dinner." And as you pass the table, you see a stack of papers, and there's writing, just uh, lines of writing on the paper. And as you kind of glance at it, it says, "All play, all work, and no play makes Jacques a but." Uh, <laughs> A dull boy. <laughs> oh no! Oh. <laughs> oh. Boy. So My just, just a legend stack of, of this parchment. Too. <laughs> Come and get some, 
come and get some and he pokes his head around the corner and he's like in this diaper like thing um uh naked except for this diaper and then he's got he's got a stick with a smoldering rat on it and he's like i made your dinner is he a boy? Uh, yeah i'm have some is he a boy or like an old man or he's an old man okay by my yeah. nephew's nappy nippers. Uh, no, my <laughs> appetite is now gone. <laughs> oh, have some. I've got plenty. You see, oh, there's all these rat skeletons around. I was like, this is just too sad. Like, I, I was prepared for like another monstrosity, but this, this is, this just makes me sad. We're not hungry, Jacques. <laughs> what is it that you wanted to show us? Oh, yes, you're here for the configuration. Yes. No, really not. We we need you. No. <laughs> but, but we need you. What did you want to show us? I, I want to show you the way out. Mm-hmm. Who are we, Jacques? There's only one way out. Yeah, Jacques, you said... And I can we... show it to you. Uh, All right, Jacques. Go ahead. Show it to me. If <laughs> there's a way out, why have you not taken it? I... I can't. I, I must show... I must herald the, the... I must herald the, the ones into the, the configuration. Mm -hmm. I can't just leave. Do you realize this responsibility I have? Do you? Yes, I For see years. that it's taking its toll on you. All right, let's go. Show me. Show am me. I, am the I mad? Probably. Am yes. I mad? Thoroughly. Yes. Absolutely. All right, come along. I'll show you where yeah. we can go. <laughs> all right, I'm glad we all understand each other. Let's go. Okay, follow. Follow Jacques. All right. So he pushes against his bookcase. And it kind of slides aside, and you see the staircase winding down. Let's go. Oh, this is the way. Follow Jacques. This is the way. See, now this is what I was hoping to find in here. Not a sad old man in a diaper, but so, you know, something interesting. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I've, we haven't had any guests. I haven't needed clothes for years. Yeah. Fair enough. How interesting. <laughs> Unfortunately, Thank you. I am... ideas, <laughs> I'm going to stop. Thank you for, for doing this. I appreciate it. I'm going to stop for a second and say, how many years? Uh, Jacques, not no. I don't remember. Does it hmm. matter? You're here now. Well, that's true. I am here now. Jacques, do you ever look out the window? Um, no. Is there a is there a window in this room? Uh, there is, but it's it's uh it's shuttered up. Uh, am is I there able any? To open it. You can, yeah. Um, ah, that light. Look, Jacques, your eyes will adjust in a moment. And we, we must go. Out, we must go this way. One moment, Jacques. What do you see out there? He kind of squints. Jacques don't see very well anymore. Do you see trees? A forest? It's a blur. Uh, what color blur? You see, his, his eyes are pretty cataract. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any, like, fabric or cloth around here? I would like to hand him a piece. Of, please tie this around your waist. As you can see, I am eye level with your diaper <laughs> I, would, I would like it greatly enormously if you would cover up okay i gotta give you a karma point for that yeah. <laughs> okay uh so um yeah so you <laughs> you do you do find a, a shred of cloth that he can at least wrap his emaciated form in thank you if it makes you feel more comfortable 
It's I'm a... sorry, I don't, I don't remember the niceties. You know, it's, this responsibility has shattered my brain. Oh, come on now, let's go, let's go. <laughs> oh, so very ready for this to be happening. So the stairs spiral down, 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 down. It must be a um, hundred feet down. Huh? Now we're well beneath the surface of the earth now. Or... And then you get okay. to a door. We have arrived. Prepare yourselves. And he pushes the door open. Are there kind any of markings on the door? Pads in. Uh, no, there aren't. It's just a plain wooden door, reinforced wooden door. Okay. So, you enter a large, I guess, undercroft? Um, you know, it looks kind of like a, a large wine cellar type of thing. Um, but what immediately catches your attention is that there is a being standing here in the middle of the room and it's it's beautiful it's the most beautiful creature you've ever seen it uh it's it starts out as kind of a lump in the center of the room and then as it stands up it lifts its arms out its arms are uh, longer than it's uh, longer than a normal person and it kind of holds them out the fingers are, are about twice as long as a normal person's fingers but it has this beautiful face that just captures you immediately that just you, you're just drawn to the majesty of this face that just it can't exist. It's it's too beautiful. It, it, there's 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 nothing that could exist that could be this beautiful. As it unfurls its arms, you see the the long digits on the ends of its fingers are kind of blackened on the end. And um, the thing the thing's body looks a bit emaciated, and its skin is almost translucent, and you can see the veins running up uh, through its skin. Uh, it has a light kind of shines behind it, and whenever it turns, the light seems to always be behind it. And as it opens its arms, it says, I have waited for you. I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am Ulfric and... the Grand, cleric of Ulfric the Grand. Tell me your name, creature. My name does not matter. Hmm. It does, that's why I ask. I am here for you. To do what? I am the key. Hmm? To what? I am the way. To what? To end your bondage. Bondage of what? Your bondage to these gods. Ah. Uh-oh. Yep. <laughs> and that's when you notice um, it's standing in a circle. Um, and as you enter, the, these runes kind of glow in the circle. It's standing in the circle, and there's these offshooting lines coming off the circle and there are smaller circles all around in the room and as your lantern kind of catches as the, as the thing kind of emits light and your lantern catches the shapes you realize that they are crouched people that are totally black and they're just crouching in these circles alive or dead? I don't know. Do you want to find out? I do. Without obviously going over one of the rune circles myself, uh, I will just take a closer look 
uh, and just try to figure out if these people are what's going on. Are they alive? Are they dead? Are they stoned? Are they burned? Right, right. Uh, so the thing in the middle of the circle, as you canter over to mm-hmm. one of these crouching forms, its golden eyes kind of watch you with interest. And do you want to touch it? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I say to the creature, so who are your friends? Pointing at the one that I'm speaking with. Okay. Uh, suddenly it moves. The creature or the, the, the blackened figure? The blackened shape. Okay. And it turns, and you kind of hear these bones creaking inside Mm -hmm. this sooty form. And it looks at you with these red eyes and says, you're not qualified to make the decision. And then all of a sudden, the things all stand up. Okay. There's about a dozen of them. Ah! And they they start ambling towards you awkwardly stumbling towards you and you can see uh in the light in the scintillating light uh they're, they're kind of like making these dust clouds as they drag their feet their yeah. sooty feet you're absolutely right my friends i say as i cautiously back up i think i'm not qualified at all i would never presume that i was uh Alfred, would you like to, or Digit, perhaps you'd like to address these gentlemen and ladies? Ladies, gentlemen, persons? As a curator of religious artifacts, do I have any religious artifacts on me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, what do you have? Uh, uh, well, um, as, a, as a disciple of the spirit of light, um, I would like to um, expose my holy symbol and and say the divines protect us. And see if it affects them. Okay. Uh, so um they kind of stumble to a halt um, glaring at you with their red eyes and Jacques says get into circles make the decision Uh, decide I'll do it the being in the center says free yourselves I am your key yes yes you're the key I get it this is uh, your chance. I'm going to walk into one of the circles. Oh, frick, is that wise? Who cares? And Jacques's like, yes, yes, the rest of you. Into the circles, quickly. Alfred? Make the decision. How many circles are there? Uh, There are a dozen. Okay. Which are now vacated because the, the ashen forms moved out of the, the sooty ashen form moved out of the circles towards you. You do not know which circle you enter. You have to be cautious, and if you choose a circle, be sure to choose the correct one that you want. Can I read the runes? Uh, yes, you can. You can. Um, you don't need to roll anything. Um, so it is indeed the uh, Thagden configuration, which is which is the crazy theory that you found out about. Yeah. That this this is this is the ritual to break the gods' tyranny over mortals, and or is their tyranny or their love, whichever you. <laughs> and does the from what these things are saying, um, mm-hmm. Alfric is guessing that whoever stands in these circles gets to decide whether we do this or not. Um, yeah, you feel that's correct. Okay, so yeah, that's why I, that's why I'm entering a circle, and I'm like, you guys. And what what are you deciding, Alfric? 
Why don't you all get in the circles and then we can decide? I don't think that's how it'd work. I don't think that would be a good idea at all. Well, what I have do you recommend? I have skin and I have no desire to turn it into soot. I believe we should come to a conclusion and as a group before we enter the circle. Jocks, I've waited this, this long to stand in the circles. I have I'm great trust. In a circle. <laughs> I have great trust in the gods and would like to see them continue and step into a circle. Bill has pointed out that it may have been indecision upon all the people stepping into the circles that may have caused this rift. Fine, we break. We, we complete the configuration. We break the gods no. away. We no. must. No. How can we ever pursue knowledge in its entirety if we are always bound by other people's rules? Oh, but it is the gods that have allowed us to have the knowledge that allows us to, to pursue it. You used the example of a parent and a child. Does not a child one day move out? And it doesn't murder his parent to do it. Exactly. Murder. And as, <laughs> oh, you know, send his parent into another shackles. dimension. Free your shackles, digit. No, no, we must be free. We must con continue to be connected to the gods. How many people do you need to do the thing? Uh, all of you. Uh, <laughs> all of you must agree. Uh. I we like risk Jack is screaming like it. get in the circles decide okay. we risk further causing a problem if we do not decide together I we will must make you a be deal. agreeing I will make Digit you a deal correct. Digit. we will avoid uh, the configuration we will decide against it but in exchange we will look for means to create our own universe and become the gods of that place <laughs> no! No! Alfred, I feel like we should have had a better interview process before we let you join this group. Because I feel like your ultimate goal is sadly misaligned with all the rest of ours. When you say join this group, do you mean start following me around everywhere I go? Because that's how I remember it. Well, that's not how I remember it at all. <sighs> <laughs> No one else has entered a circle, right? No. Or ha or or has I did. Has Vena did. entered a circle? Mm -hmm. Vena did. Vena okay. did. Okay. And you vote for not I vote for maintaining the status quo with the gods. Gotcha. Yes. Maybe uh, are the Sorry, go ahead. Maybe we can still learn something from them. If it will end this madness and get us out of this chapel. I will vote against the configuration for now. Yes, I... Uh, thank you, Alfred. I promise if you vote against the configuration and maintain the status quo, we will... I will personally escort you to any university of your choosing, and you can tell them all about this, and it'll be very exciting, as long as I'm not the one who's doing it. <laughs> This is okay. your last chance. Are you Australian? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, all right? So you said the... that these circles have um, ha are are identified, right? Mm -hmm. Um, is it important to know which ones are which? Uh, no, not particularly. Okay. All the circles uh, are the same. No, they're not you, the same. Now, now. That's not entirely true. Uh, Alfred thinks that they align themselves in the circles, like according to their philosophy and you know religion and the different things, the different di uh, disciplines align themselves. But it wouldn't necessarily be necessary. Okay. So, um, Digit is going to find whatever circle clo is more closely is more closely related to spirituality and mm -hmm. step into that circle. Yeah, I'm okay. already I'm already pointing to it for you. Okay. I so, accept whatever one is closest. So you all vote no? Yeah. 
Yes. We must maintain we our connection to the gods. I'm not going to be the one responsible for cutting the gods off from the world. That is far above my pay grade. I'll come back later. <laughs> okay, so um, you see children. The, the, be, the, the, the divine being in the center of the room says children, and you just see a single tear come down and go now go and so Jacques <sighs> he kind of <clears throat> chokes up and he said he, he goes over to another wall and he pushes a panel and the panel slides back and he says you are free to go this way will lead you out. This tunnel will lead you to the edge of the woods. I must wait now. Now go. You disappoint me. Now go. I've waited so long. And I will I... wait longer. Jacques, do you want to come with us? <laughs> yes. I have my duty. Right, but says who? We've done what you asked us to do. It is done. Didn't you, didn't you want us to break away from the gods so that we wouldn't be beholden to anyone? Why do you stay here doing duty? Just leave. I can't. I must stay. All right. Well, good luck. And I will hand him what's left of my rations. Just okay. I feel so bad for this. He looks and at it I, like it's gold. Like it's gold. <laughs> like you just handed him a and pile actually, of treasure. You know, you know just a, a little something special for you. Just you know, special occasions. And I'll I'll give him my bottle of perfume too. You know, it reminds me of home. And I, but honestly, I think you need it more than I do. Uh, good luck. And I'm down the tunnel and off on my way. So you see the dark shapes sh kind of shuffle back to their circles and cr and kneel, um, and then the, the 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 being that was in the center of the room kind of folds its arms over and then crouches down into like a lump that it was when you first saw it when you came in, um, and then um, as you head out head out through the tunnel. Um, you get you get further and further away, um, and you hear um, a little a little um, crying on Jock's part, um, a little sobbing, and then the door shuts, and you make your way to freedom in your escape, and that's where we're going to end it. Bill, they just nice. did not understand. Maybe we should have put him out of his misery. <laughs> he wow. made his choice. He <laughs> did make his choice. <laughs> I expected a big fight with the Ash zombies, but you guys, <laughs> you with your... Yeah, that was a good idea. You? That was a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Bring out those cleric skills. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Turn the undead. I mean, as soon as Ulfric heard that uh, if he wasn't qualified to make a decision, like, that sealed it. It was like, well, I have to do it now. I'm, I'm definitely qualified to make a decision. Only Alfric is qualified. Yeah. In if fact, he has found uh, that she is not qualified for it, she is like, yes, you are correct. I have a very high opinion of myself, but uh, not that high. I didn't want to interject just for the sake of, of our time here, but I think Alfred wouldn't have gone in the tunnel. He would have stayed. He would have closed oh, the no. door on you guys and tried again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. Bad elf. And then maybe sometime in the distant future, he's like the crazy... Oh, uh -huh. God. Alfred's uh -huh. like the crazy guy. <laughs> uh -huh. No, what, what Alfred's wondering is if he had been the only one in the party, uh, would that have been enough people to make the decision? Like, is it just whoever's here? Right. That's a good question. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but since uh, you came together, you were bound yeah. as a group that you had to make a group decision. 
I'm just going to hear what all the what, what the the human centipedes were. Or was it the people that were had tried to to break the break the bonds to the gods, and they were what uh, cursed or something? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Elders will stumble upon this place and be faced with the same choice. Right. Some other group will stumble here one day. Can only hope that the gods will bestow blessings upon us for maintaining their connection to the uh, realm of men. Oh, I I intend to call their attention to it. <laughs> now listen. <laughs> we saved your you homies. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want to go be part of a human centipede, be my guest. But... <laughs> well, Scotty, I love this system. Um, and I especially love the spell casting that you have here. Um, when you said that you wanted someone to play a conjurer to test that out, uh uh, I volunteered for it, but inside I was like, oh, I wanted to play something else. Um, but I want to make sure that this gets done. But man, I'm glad I did it because the magic system is just so cool. It's just come up with an idea and tell me what it is. And, right. uh, and then I'll tell you if you can do it. And I think that's so streamlined. Um, right. Oh, yeah. totally. Totally. And, you know, it, a lot of systems feel like stereo instruction spells. Where yeah. It's like, oh, here's the you put the tape in and then you get the show. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like this gives you much more creativity. And then if, you know, as a game ga- uh, game master or rabble rouser, as I call it in the uh, mm-hmm. you, you know, you can work with the player to come to to come to an agreement on something like if it, if they're the spell they're casting is not you don't feel quite within their realm. You can cut. You can come to an agreement, or if they have an idea, like you did with the rewinding of the time, uh, with the shadows, that was a fantastic. I, I mean, like you would never have that spell. With, you know, you'd have to be like twentieth level or something now. Yeah, <laughs> have that spell in D and D or whatever. But you know, so it fit with it fit with the shadows. I thought so. You know that that's cool. And like since it was like, and you know since. The thing is, you want to roll when it matters, right? right. You want to roll when what, it makes the game more interesting, whether they make it or they don't, right? If something would just not make the game less interesting if it didn't happen, why not just have it happen? It's like you have the power. Why make you roll for it? Now, in a critical situation where the thing is trying to eat you and you cast it on its head, yeah, make them roll for that. You know what I'm saying? That That's fair game. Make them roll. But – Something that you have plenty of time, you're not under duress. It's like, and they have the ability to do it reasonably. Like, let them do it. Like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> you know. So that's where that's where this system, you know, comes from. <laughs> um, and you you saw, you know, we we had very. I've had games with more roles. Um, unfortunately, the game didn't have a huge amount. But you guys just, you know, the way you played, it fit your character, so you didn't have to roll. You know, when you did. <laughs> When things happen, you would have that knowledge or you would know that or you would, you know. So, yeah. you know, I also feel that, like, you don't have to roll for everything. Like, right. if a character's your, – your characters are very competent people, right? They're good at what they do. And so if you're doing something that's within that, um, you know, let them – just let them do it and just continue the story. Don't stop the game. Roll a die. Oh, sorry, you didn't get it. So no, you don't know anything. Uh, okay, what's what's who's next? You know, it's like that's really boring play, and yeah. frustrating play. Um, yeah, for sure. I'll tell I you mean, what, what. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, you know, any 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 spellcasting class in like D and D, which I think is uh, you know always always the frame of reference, even if we're not saying it out loud. Um, right. D, any spellcasting class, you're spending so much time flipping through your spell list and figuring out what each spell does. And then sometimes yes. you misread it and the DM's like, is that what that says? And then you got to go flip. Right. Then you got to go back and read it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're wasting, you're, you're not in the game when you're reading your spell list. 
Yeah. You're not in the game. You yeah. were thinking of spells when you needed the spells, right? Right. Yes. When you're like, oh, rewind the we'll rewind the shadow. That'll be cool. You didn't pre-think of that. That wasn't on a list. Yeah. You just thought of that when it came up in the story. But so you how, reacted how great to it is so that? How quickly. Cool is that? I was wondering if you had that idea before me because you you were so on it you're like yeah that works no i didn't but i thought it was just fantastic i thought it was just a really cool idea and you got great information from that yeah like you really got information from that so um but the thing that the thing that really really got me in a game one time was that to don't hide stuff behind checks (laughs) was i was in this game where our our mentor had died he was studying this prison where it was all the worst murders in the world would go there. Okay, so it was a super prison, but it was no longer it was it was it was no longer functioning. Now it was, but but it was filled with all these ghosts, all these you know psycho murderers and like really cool things, and like it was dripping with atmosphere. Right, you could have so much fun with this. So, I was a mage character who was the learned one of the group. So I was with. Our mentor's daughter, our mentor had died. I was with our mentor's daughter in his library. He studied the prison and I kept failing roles, mm-hmm. right? All, even though I had great numbers, I kept failing roles. And so we barely knew any information going into the prison. Yeah. Like knowing about all these mass murderers and like crazy psychos going in there would make it so creepy. But because I failed roles, I didn't learn anything. Which is yeah. dumb because think of this. I'm with the guy's daughter. Yeah. She can show me where the information is. <laughs> yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? And in and, and role playing, we actually kind of had a little bit of a relationship. So it was like we're 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 friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in his library, the guy who studied the prison, and I didn't get information because my roles sucked. That's yeah. like yeah, I'm like, I, that is never ever gonna happen in one of my games. I've had that <laughs> I will never yes. have that happen. I've had that situation the worst as a feeling. DM running published adventures yeah. where it's like, yeah. well, this information is crucial, but they only get it if they roll this check correctly. Right. Like, right. well, what if they fail it? I have to come up with some right. other way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, now an alternative to that can be, okay, have them roll, but they, if they, I call it due diligence. If the players do due diligence, they go to a library. It has the information, give them the basic information. They get it. They did the work, but if they're looking for something specific, like maybe a trick to kill the boss, maybe put that behind a roll. They don't find that. They have mm-hmm. to find that out later somehow, right? Yeah. They didn't find it in the books. Um, so that's a legitimate thing to do. And that's that you can do that. That's great. But don't put basic information behind checks. It's just like <laughs> it's just yeah. more, it's just a bad way to play. And it just stalls and shuts down the game. And because the game is much more interesting when you find out information. Because, yeah. you know, like each of your characters in the game would find out something, you know, like Mia's character was out there looking at the, you know, the bo- the little thing, the bugs. You went into the, you know, you went into the, the, the guards and they're all melted together. So something weird is going on. You know, Steve, your character detected the weird mist that's like there's this isn't this place isn't right. You know, so all you all of you are adding to this whole, you know, of the story. Um, so. Just that, that, you know, I like playing that way where each character with their speciality starts is like no, automatically noticing things as their speciality collides with what they should notice. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Don't, you don't have to do a perception check. You know, like if you want to do a perception check, like you could do like, oh, something's hiding, do a perception check, and then you spot it before it jumps you. That's the legitimate perception check. But yeah. just to have a perception check to either see it or not, and then you never get to, you never find out about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's just, that's just a really bad way to play, and just yeah. not a it's not a fun way to play, right? Yeah. So. Well, I want to I, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. We're already a little late here, but man, this was oh, a yeah, lot sorry, of fun. Guys. Thanks so much. It for, was. Thank you. For, Thank you so much for joining. Yes. Playing with us, Scotty. This is just a this is a blast. Um, it great, was great adventure scenario as well as the game system. Uh, loved your loved your setup. Um, And thank you, Lisa, Mia, Sarah, for for gaming with us tonight. Uh, And I can't wait to see the finished product when this book comes out. Yes. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's in gear. I've got some, I can't tell you now who it is, but I have some excellent people working on this book. 
This yeah. book is going to be kick ass. All right. All right. <laughs> so, Looking forward. Yeah, to it's, it's, the it's already it's already the ball is already rolling on this book. Fantastic. So, Sounds yeah. awesome. It's a very fun game. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you again, Scotty. I that enjoyed was it. a lot of fun. Oh, thanks so much yes. for coming. I really appreciate you guys uh, joining. Yes, and uh, just if anyone's still watching, remember to come back tomorrow night for episode 81 of Shadows of Arconia, 5th edition campaign. Yes. Uh, universe is almost gone now. We'll see how that goes for them. <laughs> and, uh, and then on, a different silly voice. on Monday, I believe I am running uh, Mint. M-Y-N-T, which is a game I have not played before, uh, but we'll see what happens with it. So come back Friday and Monday, and we'll see you then. And uh, thanks again, Scotty, so much for coming on. Uh, hope we can make it happen again sometime, and uh, I'll see you all later on. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye.